the tradition and pageantry of college athletics. There's nothing else like it. The Mountain West Conference. Get to the game. There is a place where the search for cancer's cure happens to the sounds of John Coltrane. There is a place where a Nobel laureate teaches how to write from your heart, while some of the nation's leading scientists teach how to think with your head. Great art takes a measure of science. Great science takes a measure of art. The great university is built where they converge. UNLV. College Football on the Mountain is brought to you by Dodge. Live life to the fullest. Dodge, grab life. And by St. George, Utah. Discover St. George at adazion.com. Well, welcome back to Las Vegas, everybody. Fremont, the Bellagio, Fountain, all kinds of action on any night in Las Vegas, Nevada, but at Sam Boyd Stadium. All eyes on the Rebels and the Warriors and on Toby Christensen down on the sideline. Toby, it's 97 degrees here at 8 o'clock. You might want to take that coat off before too long. As soon as this is over, I'm probably going to ditch the coat. So thanks, James. But listen, the theme for UNLV's 2009 season is Rebels on the Rise. And that's in reference to the program's belief that this is the year that they're finally going to turn things around and not only make an impact on the Mountain West Conference, but also become bowl eligible for the first time in nine years. After three consecutive two-win seasons, UNLV experienced a minor breakthrough last year by jumping to five wins. Now, with the tough conference schedule looming, the Rebels feel that a win against this 2-0 Hawaii squad will be a huge step towards achieving that ultimate goal of qualifying for the postseason. James? All right. Thanks a lot, Toby. Actually, on second thought, you look good in those pinstripes. I'll Keep say. them on. Well, looking good as the head coach there at Hawaii in his second season. It's Greg McMacken. Spent nine years in the NFL as a defensive coordinator, but he says his heart is at the college level. Also an NFL coach in his career, Mike Sanford, now in his fifth season as the head coach of these UNLV Rebels. Really feeling good about all the energy in this program as they try to turn things around. Javante Taylor to receive the Jekyll kickoff. UNLV won the flip and deferred, and Jekyll's kick out the back of the end zone. So Hawaii will start things off at the 20 tonight. Well, two years ago, it was the Colt Brennan show, and the new gunslinger for the Hawaii Warriors is Greg Alexander, a senior out of Santa Rosa, California. Threw for just 453 yards and three touchdowns, a career high against Washington State. Good enough for WAC Offensive Player of the Week honors. The run and shoot. Everything's the spread these days in college football. But Ron Lee and these Warriors are going to run and shoot up and down the field all night long. And they go to the ground. First play from scrimmage and nothing there. Swarming things up. Malo Taumua and company. Very experienced and disciplined up front, as you'd expect, with five seniors on that offensive line. Javante Taylor and Rodney Bradley bring some speed to the table. Greg Solis was a one-man show last year, and he's a stud, but now he has a supporting cast, and that's scary for defenses. That nickel package in for UNLV. Walked up and now backing out a three-man rush on Alexander. Thrown underneath to Polaris. And he stopped just shy of the 30 and just shy of a first down. There's the big defense. Malo Taumua is from Honolulu. He sold papers outside of Aloha Stadium as a youngster. Some studs at linebacker for the Rebels. Watch for Bochamp to have his hand in the dirt, rushing the passer from the defensive end spot tonight. And you better get ready for a track meet defensive secondary for UNLV. And that's just the game of guys like Deontay Purvis, a speedster on third and short. The big six foot four, 240 pound Alexander pushes his way forward and it will be a first down and guys popping. And flags coming from everywhere. Uh, Atui was involved in that, as was Latuli. We'll see which way it goes. 
could be offsetting because you saw two different flags. Personal foul, late hit, 99 on the defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. Once again, it's the guy who does it second that gets caught. And Mike Sanford wants to have a word with his guy. That's Coach Andre Patterson, the defensive line coach for the Rebels. And Ah Tui gets an earful. And, you know, deservedly so, because that's sort of, that's, you, you can't just hand a team like this 15 yards. Let's not forget, Andre, Andre Patterson knows a little something about the wars, a veteran defensive end for the Denver Broncos, and a good one. Right Jackson, the lone back, a little shovel pass, and there he goes, slips a tackle. And Wright Jackson, big pickup across midfield. And then some, Deontay Purvis finally there to push him out of bounds. Watch the strength is on the top, is it on the top of your screen. Everybody is up here, and so that's why they have to lean to the strength. Suddenly, if this guy comes, you're going to lose something in protection. Now, watch the little flip screen. It's not a real screen at all. It's kind of a naked screen, because if you can beat one man, this is what's going to happen. Hawaii spreads you out and takes advantage of the mismatches. Although they don't run it a lot, this is a warrior team that can run. They'll run that shovel, which in essence is a lot like the draw. Jackson's still in the ball game. Here's Alexander. Lays it up there in the corner. And Kealoha Polaris has the ball and is inside the five-yard line, going up and hanging on a 32-yard strike. And for a brief moment, it appeared like Terrence Lee might have had a piece of that ball. It's going to be the corner route just to the right of your screen. This is a great throw by Alexander. Not bad coverage comes up, but great concentration. Take a look at the concentration right there. Just a terrific catch by Polaris. Polaris coming to this game, James, had caught a bunch of passes, but they're all the short variety. His average was less than 10 yards a catch, but he shows that he can stretch the defense. Had to play running back last year. He's back in his natural position. Here's the running back hammering hard. But there to meet him, Ronnie Paulo and Quentin Pointer, a short gain. So it'll be second down and goal for the Warriors. That's a big man, right, Jackson. He's, he's a little different. He's about 6'1", 220. That's not usually their runner. But of course, close to the goal line, that's what they want to give the ball to the big Nebraska transfer. Those of you that are <laughs> initiated in the offenses, you know that the run and shoot traditionally struggles in the red zone. That's Polaris in motion. He got him down there with the big 32-yard gainer. Second and goal. Popped hard, intended for Greg Salas, the big receiver, but it's T. Lee, Terrence Lee, the senior, out of Connecticut to break it up. Lee times up with Chris Jones, the other defender, to make sure that the ball isn't in there. Actually, they looked for a brief moment like a catchable ball, but Salas looking back. You know what, you young receivers, sometimes there are balls that you don't want to catch in your hands, and that's a good example because he's able to be stripped. If he's able to trap that against his chest, he might have a score. Right, Jackson flanks Alexander. Third down and goal from the two. Again to the air, and another big play by Terrence Lee. No flags. Again, they go for Salas. Terrence Lee has earned his keep on this trip. Now, this is interesting. You saw the right hand on the back, and you saw the beef by Salas. But here's something that I learned as a former receiver in the National Football League. If it's only about five yards downfield, they're not going to call it. You can just clobber a guy, and they're not going to call it. If that's the back of the end zone, he probably gets the call. A 20-yard attempt. Enos is in. A weird angle over on that right side. But it is good. So the Warriors strike first. UNLV dodging a little bit of a bullet after the big 32-yard pickup. Alexander to Polaris. It's three to nothing. Hawaii. Back here in Las Vegas, Nevada. There underneath the mist of the fan, Greg Alexander, the WAC Offensive Player of the Week, picks up where he left off. And up in the state of Washington, a scoring drive that went nine plays and 78 yards. 
thanks in large part to the 32-yard connection to Polaris and a 15-yard penalty costly Todd by Isaoko Aatui. Yeah, he impresses me. Uh, of course, if you're going to be the quarterback on a run and shoot, you're going to put together some numbers, but I'm impressed by his accuracy, particularly on that corner route. Enos, who hit the 20-yard field goal, will kick it off to the sophomore, Deontay Purvis. Purvis from his goal line. And the fastest Rebel on this team gets it out to the 29-yard line. Brought down by Mike Wadsworth, the backup defensive back. Well, there's the OC, Omar Clayton, who left the game here last weekend against Oregon State with a bruised knee. Mike Clawson came in and did an outstanding job. Two touchdown passes, and it's been two TDs in this junior season for the 6'1", 205-pounder from Normal, Illinois. Play pass. And plenty of time for Clayton. Throws it to his man, Ryan Wolf. But he can't hang on to it. Incomplete. Out there with Clayton up front. It's an offensive line that offensive coordinator Todd Berry really likes the way that they have gelled. Giannato, the junior center. Channing Trotter is the back, but this is a team that will throw it all around the yard. And Rodlin Anthony, the big man, is finally starting to put up big time numbers for the Rebels in his senior year. Right down here is the other quarterback. Clawson's back there and Clayton is wide out. This is one of the few times this year, I think it's only the second time, James, where they've had both quarterbacks in the game together. And it's a design keeper for Mike Clawson. And it was Clayton lined up wide, a flag on the play. Paredes sure. on the stop. I'm not sure Clayton was right, whether it was on the line of scrimmage or back. I think that they're going to move him back five yards. We've seen both quarterbacks in the game at the same time once this year. Rebel coaches told us to expect it a little bit tonight. This day and age when Mike Vick and Donovan, Donovan McNabb. On the offense, five men in the backfield. Penalties decline. Third down. You know, that shows an awful lot of confidence, don't you think, by Greg McBacon and his defensive crew. Remember, as you pointed out, James, Hawaii, no defensive starters from 2008. Instead of pushing them back, they're risking it on the one down. So a third down and long for the Rebels. Five watts. And right across the middle on the money to Philip Payne, but he can't hang on. It's a three and out for the Warriors. Philip Payne has to know that he's going to get hit. He has the dig route in the middle of the field. Clayton puts it right on his number. Look at that. See the little bit of short arm. Look, he's looking for somebody. That's a situation, James, where you have to put your hands underneath, cradle the ball. But look, he's trying to extend with his hands, ricochets off, sees the guy coming. That's a poor job by Payne. Against anybody, he knows he's going to get hit. Against Hawaii, he knows he's going to get hit hard. These guys come something fierce. Ryan Henry back to receive and interfering. With the catch is Terrence Lee, who had three big plays on that opening series. So it'll be outstanding field position one more time. No excuse for this. There just isn't any excuse at all. There's the return man. He's right in front of you. You know that he's the guy that's the return man. You got to get out of the way. Number 23. It's a 15 yard penalty. First down. That's another gift 15 yards that UNLV has given up here early in the game with still more than 10 and a half minutes remaining in this game. And Greg Alexander is going to get another opportunity to engineer him down the field as he did so successfully the first time around. Order for takeout. Okay. A large roast beef sub with American cheese. Pickles, lettuce, and tomatoes. No, that's not all. Ham and cheese, no mayo. Getting your order right and right on time shouldn't be a matter of luck. Why don't we just do Chili's to go instead? Thanks for calling Chili's. Trust Chili's to go to get your order right and right on time. We even give you an exact time so you can pick it up at its fresh, hot, and delicious best. It's just what you'd expect from Chili's to go. Enterprise, hi, I'm at the repair shop. I need to rent a car. Enterprise will arrange to pick you up. This is great. Drive you to our place and get you on your way. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. 
To help avoid dental problems, I give patients Act Restoring Mouthwash, the three-act mouthwash. Act 1 kills germs for fresh breath. Act 2 restores minerals. Act 3 strengthens enamel. It's why we recommend it. Act Restoring Mouthwash. For strong teeth, act now. We are writers. We are researchers. We are musicians. We are scientists. We are dancers. We are healers. But above all else, we are teachers. UNLV. Welcome back to Sam Boyd Stadium. Just getting started, 1033 left in the first, and the Hawaii Warriors drawing first blood on their first series, and they've got the ball back and an extra 15 yards, and this, this is an offense that can really go. We all saw Colt Brennan do it on the mountain two years ago right here on that perfect run, a 12-0 regular season, and now it's Greg Alexander's turn. Good coverage down the field. Alexander will tuck it and run, and he picks up nine yards. Paulo chasing him out of bounds. Those of, you that are, those of you that are the more sophisticated fan, one thing you might want to watch is the difference in numbers that are going to be filtering in and out for UNLV. To rush the passer is frustrating because you have the hardest time getting there. You do get tired, but they're going to interchange. They need to get a pass rush on Alexander. He can't be sitting back there all day, not to mention the fact that at 240 pounds, even though he's that big, he does have some running skills. Bochamp, the defensive end up top, Usually a linebacker playing rush end tonight. Plenty of time and underneath. Here's Polaris makes a move and back across the grain. He's getting a block down the field from Bradley. Quinton Pointer finally drags him down, but the Warriors are inside the 20-yard line after a 28-yard pickup. They're able to catch him in a little bit of a zone. You're going to get the crossing route down here, and you're going to see the zone is going to be unfortunate because the linebackers are too far off. And the defensive backs, look at the gap here before he even gets touched. You've got a good five to six yards. Now he does a great job of making people miss him, and he cuts up field. And, of course, James, you pointed out earlier that he had been a running back, and he showed some sweet feet there, getting him to the 20-yard line in the Dodge red zone. There's the handoff to Wright Jackson. Bunch of Rebels there in his face in a hurry. Chris Jones leading the charge, the sophomore from right here in Vegas. A little bit of confusion there in the backfield. Coach McMacken doesn't seem to be too worried. Has a lot of confidence in his offense. And his coordinator, Ron Lee, who was an interesting conversation for you and I. Brothers Ron and Calvin, the two coordinators on this squad, two outstanding coaches at the high school level back in Oahu in their day. Three-man rush, wide open, but unable to pull it down. The intended receiver, Rodney Bradley, showing you those jets that they have now on the outside for the Warriors. But they can't connect. This is why you can't mess around. Watch right here. He's going to look in the backfield. Lee's going to look in the backfield like he's going to blitz, and then he has to turn around and run wide open. And Alexander certainly wishes he had that one back. You can see right there, that's number 25. I'm sorry, that's Mike Grant who gets caught looking in the backfield. You can't mess around. You just cannot mess around with that deking because of the speed of the outside receivers for the Rainbows. One of two Hawaii on third down tonight. The blitz is on. Out there to Greg Solis, his first catch of the night. And Solis knocked out of bounds after about five yards, shy of the first down. Toby, what's going on down there on the field? Well, you were just talking about the uh, speedy outside receivers, and I just wanted to mention that number seven, Javante Taylor, the other guy, the Z, has actually been out since the first play of the game with what appears to be an ankle injury. Hawaii has a policy of not letting us know what it is, but right now, Royce Pollard, the sophomore, the six-foot sophomore, number 81, is in for Javante Taylor. Thanks a lot, Toby. Yeah, Javante Greg Solis last year was, was the guy, but he was really the only guy. Now he's got that supporting cast, but without one of those members. 
So here's a 31-yard attempt. That is no good for Enos. He hit a 20-yarder earlier. Quentin Pointer there with the hand to disrupt things, and it's still three to nothing. We'll be back. Scott Enos is a little bit beleaguered. We'll give you a chance to take a look at it in just a little bit. Everything happened ahead of him, and we'll give you a chance to see that following this play. Only three yards gained the first time the Rebels have the ball. And here comes Clayton and company one more time. There's a big hookup with Jeremy Robinson, the senior. Scott Enos isn't ready. Evidently, Luke Ingram and Enoki Fanaki are. Take a look. He starts to move. Oh, my, oh I got to kick it now. I, I can tell you right now, that is very difficult on a kicker. And the discussion on the sideline was who was wrong and who was right. But regardless, that's a gift three points that they gave away. Tight end in the ball game is Kyle Watkins for the Rebels. Here's the handoff to Ryan Wolf. Ryan Wolf gets a good block down the field for Michael Johnson, but unable to take advantage is that heat-seeking Hawaii defense. They're in a hurry. Michael Johnson might have got away with a hold at 5'8", 170 pounds. One of the downsides, of course, of the spread is you don't have that big tight end blocking ahead of you. You have a lot of little guys. A negligible gain for number 88. To see the total yards. Hawaii dominant, of course, having had two possessions already. Trips at the bottom of the screen. Free play. Another flag, and they don't take advantage of the, the free play. I, I don't understand that. He knows it. it. It would appear to me that Clayton knew it, so why not throw a jump ball? It looked like he just threw it away and was content to get the five yards. Why wouldn't you just, you know, you know, throw Off a pop-up? Give it a shot. 49 on the defense. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Especially when you look at those big bodies in Robinson, Wolf. Yeah and pain down there. Let's check our Dodge keys to the game while we got a chance here. Well, shoot and run. The run part of it is significant because early on, Hawaii has been able to get some in the kind of running game, as James mentioned, the shovel passes. Aloha means goodbye. The defense needs to get off the field. They've done that fairly well, at least early on. Get right back to the keys for UNLV. And well, maybe this ought to be one of them because they did not have much success last week running the football. And that's a good feeling right there for the Rebs, a first down. Well, the Rebel confusion is because on, on the defense, we mentioned not a single starter from last year. And that's what they're going to attempt to do is confuse that secondary and set to explode. That's a big phrase now once the coaches, the lexicon, explosion plays 15 or more. Check and see if UNLV has that number around halftime. Isn't it funny? New, the new terminology, you got explosion and length when you talk about body. The guy's got length. That's another new term. So here's Clayton one more time. Ryan Wolf as the defender falls down. That was Jeremy Bryant trying to cover one of the best receivers in the nation. And not successful there as they hook up for 14 yards. We just talked about the confusion factor. Clayton rolls to his right and comes back. Watch what he's going to do. He'll look to his right, rolls there, but then throws back against the grain. But hold, you can't be looking in the backfield if you're a defensive back, and he gave far too much cushion to number 88, and as a result, they were able to procure a first down. Payne down at the bottom. And Clayton looks up top, picks up a block from his back. Trotter. And running and has to throw that one away as Robinson was covered down the field. Jake Hume, who's making the start in front of the injured Elliot Purcell with the pressure. It's a nice job by the secondary, Hopkins, Smith, Silva, and Bryant. When Clayton gets out of the pocket, that means you have to cover that much more downfield. And we keep mentioning the youth of this Hawaii secondary and people that haven't played before. They did a nice job there covering despite the fact that Clayton had six or seven seconds to throw. Trotter switches sides and gets the handoff. Tries to get the edge. And again, the speedy Warriors running him down, running and gunning offensively and defensively. And that's Spencer Smith, the junior safety, way over in Marietta, Georgia, in Cal High School. And he was way over on the other side of the field. He did a nice job going from sideline to sideline to make that tackle. Pretty good numbers there early on. 14 tackles here in the first two games along with a pick. 
<laughs> He's HHH, right, James? <laughs> That's right. The hard hitting Howie. That's what they call it. <laughs> Rebels trying to hit their first third down conversion tonight. The blitz was on and a big pop, but able to hang wow. on to it. Jeremy Robinson, the sticks will move. Here's what I was making reference to earlier when sometimes you don't make a hands catch because you know you're going to get clobbered. Runs right into it. Look at that. And actually the hit, the hit makes him catch the ball. See that? Hits him between the eight and the five, trapped against his chest. Great job by Robinson in holding on. You're right, Todd. If he wasn't hit, he may have been thrown behind him. Watch Philip Payne at the bottom of your screen. So many times he's caught that fade in the corner of the end zone. Instead, it's a handoff to Trotter. He's going to come back across the field. Inside the 10, inside the 5, knocked down at the three-yard line. A 14-yard pickup for the Rebs, and they're knocking at the door. One of the things that happens oftentimes with a young, young defense is I think somebody else is going to make the play. Right there, right there, all these white shirts, there are some white shirts that are assuming that the play is dead. Instead, Trotter bounces out, cuts back against the grain, and this is what happens with the young team, James. They over-pursue, and the result of over-pursuing has Trotter inside the five as they set up first and goal. Clawson now the quarterback for UNLV. At C.J. Cox in motion, fake the handoff. And touchdown, Mike Clawson. You know, James, that was the play that they were running, they were going to run earlier when they had the two quarterbacks out, out on the field. Great job at the point of attack. Take a look at Hawley, Marshall, do a great job of creating enough of a gap for Clawson to make his way in. Something, something that you pointed out, though, did you see the knee go down on the one and a half? For whatever reason, if you lean over the goal line, they'll give you six. At no, midfield, no. it's not the same, right? Well, the Rebel fans aren't complaining, that's for sure. The boys from UNLV march down the field, 80 yards, capped off by the sophomore. Mike Clausen's two-yard touchdown plunge. Jason Heath does a nice job pulling out and creating a gap for Clausen. One thing I found interesting, James, as we talked with the coaches, Clausen, remember, uh, last Saturday, 10 for 13, two touchdowns, was fabulous in the game. Had some nice runs, but he didn't beef at all about not starting. Well, and you talk about sharing. Remember now, these two quarterbacks, although they've competed many times for that starting position, it's now the OC show. It's Omar Clayton is your starter for Mike Sanford. But Clausen plays a lot. They're best of friends. They're roommates. They call them the twins. And last week, Omar Clayton was injured, bruised his knee, and he went to the coaches and he said, hey, coach, I can play, but Mike will probably do a better job than I will running it right now. And he did an outstanding job coming in. And there you go. Huddled together, sharing the same phone. Sharing the phone. Right on cue. <laughs> Here's Kealoha Polaris. Tripped up as he crosses the 20-yard line by Bo Orth, the linebacker. Las Vegas boy. Look at our guy, Marius Payton. And Bill Dolman, the Mountain View. All the lights are on them in the studio. Guys having a good time in the studio tonight. Hopefully it wasn't the best of days for the Mountain West Conference. Air Force and New Mexico getting things started. And Air Force with the win. Colorado State with a big win. There you see the conference call now for the quarterbacks. Here's the blitz off the edge. Alexander sees it and able to get it out there right where it came from. Good heady play by the quarterback. And a big pickup on first down as he connects with Royce Pollard. One of the things they, they do so well with the run and shoot is you're going to get to see. Watch all the, the white shirts to the left are going to take the coverage with them. Look at that. They have, they have two vertical routes and the coverage goes with them. Short underneath once again. They're going to have to go with a little more man coverage because James are giving way too much cushion when they get in some of those zones. It's been easy pickings thus far for Alexander. Polaris in motion, joins Solace up top. He's the slot man. Underneath to Polaris, who again tries to stop and cut it back, but Terrence Lee's not having it. 
Polaris would have been better off to keep going. Remember, he did that earlier on his crossing route, made a cut back and turned into a big play. If he'd have kept going, utilizing his momentum, he might have gotten the first down. But we've called his name an awful lot here early on with kick returns and receptions. Number 21 doing very well here in the first stanza. Greg Polaris, who started the opener in Gainesville, Florida, against the Gators last year. And then he gave way to Inoke Funaki, who's back at his position, the running back. Started the second half of the year and did a good job. Here he is, pocket collapses, and he spins out and's gonna run it. Up near the first down marker, gonna be a couple yards shy. Preston Brooks with the pressure, and Ronnie Paulo with his third tackle of the night. James, one of the things that we talked about earlier was the frustration that can set in as a defensive lineman. Now you have an opportunity. You have a chance to get a sack, and they just can't do it. Again, does it, he reminds you a little bit body type of Ben Roethlisberger, that big body that you really have to get two hands on and a body to sack. You can't just pull him down with hands. Even with his helmet off, he's a grizzly looking dude. <laughs> One of three on third down. Alexander and the Warriors. They've got to get three for a first down here. Four-man rush. There's Bochamp. And there's the connection. The big man, Greg Salas. Nobody there for him. Already leading the nation in receiving yards per game at 54. A touchdown onto that. We talked about the relationship between Alexander and Salas. Salas actually is going to slip and fall down. He's coming out of the slot. He's going to come out here. He's going to slip and fall, get up, and follow his quarterback over here. Take a look at this. Look at that. He slips and there he is. He slips and falls down. That's where he's going. But now the quarterback breaks out. Salas has the wherewithal to get up and run with his quarterback. And once he makes the catch, he is gone. The extra point is good. Also point out there, Todd, that rush in was Jason Bochamp, who usually is a linebacker, and he loses containment and lets Alexander run free. Well, this is what the run and shoot does, James. Their leading tackler and arguably their best defensive player, star Fui Maono, I don't think we've seen him yet. 23 tackles coming into this game because that's what the run and shoot does. It makes, it predicates to you what you're going to do defensively. And as a result of that, thus far, Hawaii has been able to take advantage of those mismatches. You have linebackers rushing. You have safeties covering. You know, you have other people stepping back into zones that aren't used to stepping back into zones people are uncomfortable and that's what that run and shoot continues to do is it makes you uncomfortable and you can never prepare for it exactly like you would want coming into a game. Uh, the response, remember Dennis Thorell, defensive coordinator, made reference to it as he thought, he said this was the throwing man's wishbone. The throwing man's wishbone, an interesting take on the run and shoot is how defensively you have to make profound adjustments when you face a team <coughs> as good with the run and shoot as the Hawaii Rainbows. Deontay Purvis deep into his own end zone and Enos' kick is a good one. Look at Sam Boyd Stadium and look at the best receiver in the nation right now. Just a junior out of Chino, California, Greg Salas. Are you kidding me? Are, are you kidding me? Seriously. 27 yards a catch? That, that's, that's, like, that, that's like PlayStation 3 numbers. <laughs> Come on. Toby, take it away. No, you guys were just talking about Greg Salas, and I love jumping in on the receivers. I mean, he was the big go-to guy last year, started all 14 games as a sophomore. He's an award candidate for the Blitnikoff Award, and now he's got help around him, so he's not seeing as much double coverage. I think you're gonna, that's why he's averaging so many yards per catches, because he's getting man-for-man -man coverage a lot. Hey, Toby, did you even average 27 in high school? Are you kidding me? No, I didn't. <laughs> nor, nor do I on Madden. <laughs> Toby's dad used to a uh, Tecmo Bowl. <laughs> Kids don't play Tecmo Bowl anymore, but Todd Christensen was was money as a Raider tight end. And you know, speaking of Todd and the Raiders, congratulations on that pre preliminary list. Award candidates for the Pro Football Hall of Fame, my partner right here. Proud of you. Congratulations, bud. Thank you. 
I think I'll vote for Reggie Roby, though. I like this watch. Yeah, that's right. And his legs swing. I guess he could kick higher than I could. Second down and eight for Clayton. That list just announced today. Randall Cunningham also on the list, a former UNLV quarterback. Rebs go to the ground and not much there for him. Maybe a gain of a yard. On the stop is Elliot Purcell. Good to see him in the ball game. He was dinged up all week, did not make the start. There's a baseball analogy to this, and that is, is that when you get a two-run homer, you want your pitcher to come back and throw a shutout. This is not what UNLV wants. They do not want to go three and out here after Hawaii just scored a touchdown, especially in the dramatic fashion in which they did it. They need seven. Four-man rush. Trouble for Clayton, and he's dropped. Elliot Purcell, back-to-back -back big plays for the Warrior D. Well, one of the advantages of youth and Purcell is he is persistent and obviously shows his conditioning. He's going to come from the right of your screen, comes in, puts the pressure on, now avoids him briefly. Now Purcell comes off his man, spins back, and is able to make the play on Clayton before he can get any additional yardage. Great hustle by number 90. 95 as well. That's Mayatonga with the initial pressure. A flag is down, and this punt by Watson will not get off. This begs the question. Oh, and, 42 on the offense. And that is Five yard a, penalty. That is a, the, quarter, the quarter ran out. I think because the flag went went down before the quarter went out, they need to punt from this from this end. And, and while it's not altogether consequential, the wind is at the back of the Rebels. So Kyle Watson, who handles the... Please reset the game clock yeah. to three seconds. That's right. Randy Smith and his crew Thank here you. tonight. Thank you. The clock will wind. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Watson, the field goal kicker as well. He, was, he wasn't aware of that, that it was going to wind. He should have snapped it right away. I, I, I understand that maybe I'm making too big of a point, but what the heck? Now you've got, you've got a little wind at your back. Might as well take advantage of it. You mean to tell me there's wind blowing in here? About 97 degrees tonight at kickoff. It's a three-point warrior lead after one. here at Sam Boyd Stadium in this WAC Mountain West Conference showdown. And after one, Hawaii up by three. Watson just getting that one off, and Henry backtracks and scoots under a couple would-be tacklers across the Hawaii 40-yard line. Our stats through that first quarter of play. Well, the big number for me is the pass yards, obviously. You can see right there, 165 to 41 in time of possession for the Warriors, which, which indicates why they're up by a tray. Big series here for this UNLV defense. Been hit by some big plays. Alexander to Polaris, first drive, and then Alexander to Solace. Last time out. There's the wide receiver screen to Solace one more time. Solace lowers his head and continues to fight. Takes about four Rebels to bring him down. Pointer, the first man there. Part of this, James, is recognition. They're going to wear you out with their own execution, but defensively, you have to be paying attention and get up there quickly. You know, that, that, that shouldn't have been a seven or eight yard play. That should have been more like a four or five yard play. But at least right now, UNLV's recognition is questionable. They're not getting on top of it. There goes that average for Solace. What a shame. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the average for Alexander. Not too bad there. 75%. And quickly to the other side this time. Tikaloha goes up in the air. 
and Polaris. Airborne hits the ground running, a first down and then some. And give credit to Salas that time. You, you know about his numbers catching the ball, but he shows that he can block downfield too. Watch the right of your screen. Number one is going to put a block outside, enabling Polaris to cut up inside of him and get some additional yardage. It's one thing that sometimes gets underrated in the run and shoot because you don't have a tight end. And of course, the running back is a blitz pickup kind of guy. The downfield blocking has to be done by the wideouts. We've seen Quentin Pointer and Deontay Purvis both tonight have an opportunity to make a nice tackle. Tackling was an issue against Jacquez Rogers and the Beavers last week. To the air, intended for three Bradley, Rodney Bradley. And there was a little bit of a space there for Bradley, the junior. They ran the exact same formation as they had the last two times with the quick screens to the wide receiver. This time they set it up the same way, and he had him open, and Alexander would certainly like to have that one back simply because of the fact that he had Bradley so open. Bradley caught the game winner in the opener at Aloha Stadium, Aloha Stadium, sorry, against Central Arkansas. No Bochamp and no star Fui Maono on this second down and 10 for the Rebel defense. There's the rush, coverage downfield and ball thrown out of bounds and Rebels lucky that it was because all tangled up. Warren Ziegler and Royce Pollard. Well, Pollard wanted to know what the deal was. There you can see a little bit of a push, but of course that, that definitely would fall under an uncatchable ball. Hey, nice, nice belly flop. Oh, we're glad those pads are out there. Another, another reason, I guess, for sharp copiers, right? Got to right on top of it. <laughs> He's going to buy one. Two of four, Hawaii on third down. They got to go 10 here. Three-man rush. Strike down the middle. Too strong into triple coverage. All eyes on Greg Salas. So the Rebel D stands. Hunting unit yet to come on, though, for Greg McMacken. This is a little bit too long for a field goal. You can see that right for a, for a brief moment, Alexander thinks he's open. A great job in the secondary for UNLV closing the gap, and good that Alexander overthrew him as far as he did. And here at the 37, James, I I'm thinking that they might be going for it. I'm not going to talk about it for the timeout. Greg McMacken will talk it over with his offense spent two stints as a hawaii defensive coordinator now he's the head man We're gonna take it back to the studios in denver colorado bill dolman what's going on there in denver tonight Hey, James, well, we're just kind of hanging out watching some football. Bill Dolman with Bo Morgan, and we've been watching football all day here, but we are keeping a close eye on the Rebels and the Warriors, just as you are. And, Bo, looking at that scoreboard, it could be a lot worse for UNLV right now. You know, it almost looks like they're suffering a bit of a hangover from that tough loss last week to Oregon State. Here you see a, a missed opportunity from Hawaii. Should have been a touchdown there. Should have gone up big on UNLV early, but UNLV bounces back. Here, Jeremy Robinson, number 85, a receiver we didn't actually talk about in our pregame who's had some nice catches on their scoring drive here you're going to see Mike Clausen come in at quarterback and actually punch this in a nice luxury to have when you're a big quarterback but right now this game could be 21 to 7 so UNLV very fortunate that they're only down by just a little bit to, to Hawaii at this point you know the hangar was a pretty popular movie during the course of the summer do you think perhaps uh, UNLV is suffering a hangover after last week's loss to Oregon State well at least on the defensive side of the ball I think they are right now they they seem like they're just a step behind this run and shoot offense is designed to create opportunities in space and so far Greg Alexander and the Hawaii offense is doing just that all right, let's send it back out to Las Vegas. Guys, I know it was 99 degrees there earlier today. It's at least that in this studio right now, so stay cool right where you are. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. A full house here at Sam Boys Stadium. They just played Nasty Boys by Janet Jackson for you. That was just for you guys back in the studio, working hard as they do every Saturday back in Denver. Well, what does this UNLV defense have now on fourth down and 10 as Alexander and the Warriors will go for it here. And a timeout called by Mike Sanford. Bochamp came running off the field. Here you use a timeout 
Todd, and you have a chance, and, and you don't get on the same page, and Sanford is hot, right. as he should be. And, and deservedly so, yeah. Well, with, with that much of a gap, you get a chance. He didn't have the right personnel. I, th th there was a situation there where we mentioned earlier, Fui Maono, who had not been in the game, he was in the game. And I think that one of the things that they wanted to do there was they needed their dime personnel on the field. Actually, you know, I'm surprised. I'm surprised at the decision of Hawaii to go for it. Not because they don't have a potent offense, but it shows a, a lot of confidence that McMakin has in his defense because if they don't do that, McMakin rather, if they're not able to do that, you know, they give them great field position. Usually, it seems to me, James, that usually it's the defensive coaches that don't want to go for it on fourth down to put their defense in bad positions, but he, he has, obviously has to like the way Alexander has been throwing the football. A lot of faith in his guys. He said these guys, they, they're all pretty good because there's so much competition because so many open spots. There you see TCU with their win. They'll head to Clemson next week. Three sacks for Jerry Hughes. Can the Rebels get a sack on Alexander? Three-man rush. Alexander throws it up there for Solace. Too much air underneath it, and it's picked off by Mike Grant. Great play by Mike Grant, but it's fourth down. And as you know, James is a defensive player. Sometimes you just can't resist getting that interception. And so Hawaii actually kind of got the best of both worlds there. They got a chance to go for it, but even though they didn't come up with it, it was like a terrific punt down to the eight-yard line. Sometimes, you know, it occurs to me that sometimes, James, when this happens, young people, you want to think that they have the savvy to knock that ball down. But again, so excited to get a pick, and he's congratulated by everybody, even though the field position issue, you're, and you're absolutely right. It would have been better off if he had knocked it down. And an opportunity at the timeout to remind him to knock it down right. in that situation. Instead, deep in their own territory and up top for Waddle and Anthony. And it's picked off, going back the other way. This time it's Mana Silva, the junior. Well, Silva is one of the defensive leaders, and he's not intimidated by the six foot six inch Anthony. Look at the speed of which he comes completely across the field. If he doesn't come across, Anthony probably makes that catch. What a great effort on the part of Silva, and there's absolutely no interference whatsoever, even with the collision, because he's going for the ball all the way. That's his third pick already in this young season. But Todd, you can tell us more than anyone, an all-pro in the NFL, Ronald and Anthony has to go up and high point that football and use that big frame. He stood almost flat-footed. But I think that he was thinking the corner was the only guy over there. The safety came over and made a tremendous play. Ball hawks on this defense and back to the offensive side, and that one's broken up. Salas had his hands on it, but they're in a hurry. Chris Jones. Chris Jones does a nice job of breaking on the ball. And Polaris normally sure-handed, unable to come up with it. It's difficult enough to defend the run and shoot. But after you do a great job, you stop the team, get a turnover, and then your offense turns it right back over. That, that put a lot of pressure here on these Rebels. Two linebackers in the game for the Rebs. Paulo and Fuimano. No champs in there, but he says a defensive end. Off the edge with the blitz. Pass is complete to Polaris. It was Pointer. The cornerback was blitzing. And a pickup of about five yards for the Warriors. Well, here you sit now, Todd. Basically the same position. They go for it on fourth down and ten. So four down territory right. probably right here as yep. well. But this isn't a patient offense that's going to pick up two and then three more. They want the big hitter. And as the guys in the studio mentioned earlier, the Rebels lucky that it's just 10 to 7 right now. Like to get another big stand here. Again with the blitz. And again a receiver running free and Alexander cannot connect with Rodney Bradley. Same throw that we, we saw earlier, kind of the fake to the screen and get the ball up. But again, Alexander is long with it, and this is about a 50-yard field goal, so he's going to get go over and get the instruction. He's going to get it exactly right here on this fourth down and five. So UNLV now two of six on third down. 
And here Greg McMacken and his Warriors going for it on fourth down for the second time tonight. They need five. Polaris with the catch, but he dropped it. He bobbled it, never had a grasp of it. And so another turnover on downs for the Warriors. 12.03 left to play here in Las Vegas in the first half. UNLV with the ball when we return. Payne, Ryan Wolf, Rodel and Anthony, and Omar Clayton. A lot of firepower on the offensive side of the ball, Todd, but it's been the defense of Dennis Thorell that has really kept this game close, 10 to 7 right now. Alexander's piling up some numbers, but still the big numbers, you pointed out earlier, 2 for 6 on third down and 0 for 2 on fourth down. The Rebel defense has been rising to the occasion. Trotter was stacked behind Robinson. He's back in the backfield. Pressure on Clayton. Good coverage down the field. And a young Hawaii defense is playing very good football right now here at Sam Boyd Stadium. Very hot night in Las Vegas. Supposed to cool down tomorrow after we leave. I'm James Bates alongside Todd Christensen up here in the booth and Toby Christensen down on the sidelines. We're in the pinstripe suit. I don't know if it's going to last all night, though. Have to check back with him in a second. Second down and 10 for Clayton and the Rebs. They'll run the option right. Never thought about pitching, had it tucked away in his left hand. Helmet popped off as Paradis and Richard Torres combine on the stop. Clayton hasn't been much of a runner thus far, even though he has the skills to do it. You see those numbers, very impressive, that, that TD to interception ratio right there. The Rebels one of three on third down tonight. It's third down and three here from their own 40. There's the handoff to Trotter. And a big collision that he bounces off of was going to be stopped shy of the first down. But it will be a first down on the second effort by the junior from Mesa, Arizona. Sometimes there's an advantage to being diminutive or if you prefer vertically challenged. Channing Trotter at 5 foot 8, 200 pounds has the low center of gravity and so he's not just going to get knocked off his feet without wrapping up. They did not wrap up. He's able to bounce back, make kind of a 360 turn and get a crucial first down for the Rebels. There's the play pass and Clayton Way over the head of Ryan Wolf. This is this is a poor decision on the part of Clayton. He's not seeing the coverage. They had a too deep situation. He throws that corner, and he was lucky to get that one back. He was fortunate he was able to overthrow it. Look at Wolf for a brief second. It looks like he's open. Look at the white shirt's close. If he throws that ball to where Wolf can catch it, that's a pick. Spencer Smith better be careful right there. Took a little pop. Yeah. Uncatchable ball. Michael Johnson in motion for the Rebels. Second down and 10. All kinds of pressure, and he connects with Johnson. The sophomore hauls it in. Looks to be just shy of the first down sticks, though. James, just as I was critical of Clayton, the play before that time, he showed a lot of composure. They come with the blitz. Watch to the right of your screen. They're going to come with the blitz. White shirt right in his face. He knows that they don't have anybody to protect him, but he's able to lay the ball out there and once again come up with a manageable third down at third and two. There's the option to Johnson, who just had the big catch, and it looks to be enough for the first down. Blaze Soares on the tackle. The downside of this, James, is this is far too far in the backfield. Nice move, the trickery, the fake, and everything else, but he pitches the ball, and he ends up getting the ball. He's about six yards behind the line of scrimmage. Very fortunate to get that first down, but give Johnson credit for sticking his nose in there and getting it. Give him credit for the red tips there and the dreads. Very nice. Strength coach John Grieco giving him a pat on the back. He'll get a rest. C.J. Cox is the running back now for the Rebels. There's Philip Payne. Passes complete to Payne. It'll be another first down, and the sticks will move. 
Clayton does a nice job of recognizing the defense. Watch down here at the bottom. He knows that this guy isn't going to come out. Now watch at the snap of the ball. He gets out of there, and as a result of coming forward, he's got an easy throw. Nice job by Clayton to see that. Tank Hopkins, the defensive back, is the one that fled from the scene. Watkins the tight end. There's Wolf in the backfield. A handoff to Ryan Wolf. And that's what he does best. Usually after the catch, Todd, he gets vertical better than anybody. Here he does it from the backfield with the handoff. And he shows great hands here. Watch this handoff. This is a little shaky right here. It's a little bit late. Watch it. Watch the timing isn't quite there. Look at that. Just, you know, those, you can see the ball bobble just a little bit. That's nice hands in the part of 88 to hold on to that one because that looked like it had disaster from the start. But he's able to hang on. Here's the handoff to the burner. C.J. Cox gets some good blocking up front. They needed one. They get a whole lot more inside the Dodge red zone again. The right side of the offensive line, Hawley and Marshall, did a great job of creating a hole. And for some reason, I guess it's because of his first carry. Look at the hesitation. Look at that hole. Come on. Come on. What are you waiting on? Should have got a lot more out of that. And a great job by the right side of the offensive line for the Rebels. Only 82 yards rushing last week for these Rebels. A big emphasis put on the ground game. Once again to the ground, this time, though, after a gain of about two. And you know what this sets up, don't you? He's been handing off every single time, every single time. This would be a great opportunity to run the exact same play and for Clayton to pull it out. Because now you've had a number of zone reads here where everybody's anticipating that the ball is going to get handed to him. This would be a great opportunity for Clayton to pull it out or even Clawson to come in and do the same thing. Five wides, seven different players, Todd, on this UNLV offense have one carry tonight for Mike Sanford. Are you a fan of that? We hear this all the time. We want to spread it around. I, I want to get the ball in the hands of my guys that make plays. There's no penalty for 12 men on the field. Ball start of the snap. Are they ready? It, it, and I like to think that it's it's good for a running back maybe more so than any other position to get him lathered up and a running back to get in the rhythm you get a running back in the rhythm and he starts to feel it you, exactly you, you feed me feed right, me feed right, me right. exactly but of course UNLV not a running team here they go with the play pass the pressure on Clayton stands in there and hits Rodel and Anthony Anthony pulls it in and tries to get turned upfield will be knocked out of bounds Two yards shy of the first down marker. For a number of years, UNLV has been waiting for this man, number 84. Six foot six, 230 pounds, 458, 40 guy. That big body to come through. He's had some moments, but not as consistently as they'd like. But in the first two games, seven catches for 130 yards and three touchdowns. I'm surprised number 84 isn't in there, James, because it's a red zone situation. He's a jump ball guy along with Payne. Payne isn't in there either right now. It's Michael Johnson. A flag is down, and it's Jordan Barrett, the true freshman, with the reception. But what is the flag for? Illegal formation. The offense. Five players in the backfield. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Here's another issue that you just mentioned. You have a new guy that catches the touchdown, he comes in. You know what, if you have the same players in the, in the field, you're sitting there saying, are you up, are you, am I back, are you up, are you, am I back? It doesn't matter who's up and back, you just have to have the right number. But if you're not talking to one another, you haven't played, sometimes you come in and you make that error. And a true freshman at yeah. that would have been his first touchdown. And he'll have to wait. And the Rebels now third down and eight. They can get a first down inside the five. Clayton puts it up there for Ryder and Anthony, but it's picked. It's Richard Torres, the sophomore Kahuku Red Raider. 
And a big old stop for the Hawaii Warriors. But it's the collision at the goal line that makes the play. Anthony goes up for the ball, cannot get a hold of it. Great tip for the interception. Wasn't that, uh, James, I think that was your hard-hitting Howley, wasn't it? During the return, the illegal block in the back, number 90. That only be half the distance, first down. So it will go back, and there's Torres, played high school at Kahuku up on the North Shore for his dad, Reggie Torres, was a quarterback in high school. And just got word from the island today, Todd, that St. Louis lost last night and Kahuku won. So probably the number one team when they start the new week there in high school football on Oahu. Red Raider pride. Red Raider for life like, like Robert and I, many other greats. And I, of course, the offensive coordinator at BYU. Give Tories his due, but Smith has to get an assist for the collision with Anthony. So from their own nine, Alexander and the Warriors, Polaris. You know, these defensive backs, Todd, they need to do a better job of stepping up and wrapping. They can't just come in and, and just bump these guys down. This is, you know, but this is interesting. This requires some mental toughness. And here's what I'm getting at. You know, the out routes, they don't seem to be a big deal. They're five yards. Now, who's going to break first? Is Alexander going to be impatient and try and throw it downfield? Or is the defense going to go, we're going nuts. Let's go with the blitz and give something up. But there's a mental toughness here that you just got to hang in there. Four down linemen for the Rebels. And Polaris, the Aloha Polaris does an outstanding job of catching that ball and turning and getting everything he can. Well, just on the other end of the spectrum, we were talking about Solace with his two, with his great average per catch. You know, he had a couple of 60 plus yard plays in the first two games. Polaris does the underneath stuff, the Wes Welker type stuff that sometimes doesn't get the requisite attention, but it moves the sticks. They move here, another first down. For the Warriors, under six minutes to play in the first half. Play pass. And bodies bumping a little bit, maybe getting away with a little bump as Mike Grant and Rodney Bradley, the intended target. Toby, one of the things as a former wide receiver, I'm curious, the patience factor, catching the five, six yarders and then having to go deep, even though at least at this point, Alexander doesn't look accurate deep. As a receiver, do you get impatient for such things? <laughs> I'm the wrong guy to ask. They never asked me to go deep. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always loved the five and six yarders and turning them into 10 yarders and getting the first down was what, what I was about. But yeah, the guys that are used to going deep and they like the long ball, it's tough when the defense is constantly playing off to be patient, but that's what you gotta do. Three-man rush, Alexander stands in there, and Polaris makes the guy miss. Again, poor tackling, Paulo and Purvis finally bringing him down. It'll be third down and short for the Warriors. And you talked about the tackling earlier, James. That actually is a big deal. Instead of third and six or third and seven, you've got third and three and third and four, and let's face it, that, that's much more manageable. When it's Jacquez Rogers, who even the USC linebackers, all three of those guys that were high draft yeah. picks in the NFL last year couldn't bring him down. You got an excuse, no excuse tonight. Right. But these aren't world beaters they're trying to bring down. Four wides for Hawaii. And this time they do connect Alexander and Bradley. It'll be another first down for the Warriors. What a great throw this is by Alexander. There are a number of bodies he has to get this ball over. This is the difficulty of a quarterback. Take a look, watch as the ball is delivered. Look at the bodies, green and red shirts. Look at that in a row. There's at least three different people he has to get that ball over. If one of them can see him and get a hand up, they might get a piece of it. Great accuracy on the part of number dozen there. Alexander's having himself a tremendous first half statistically. Rebels sure could use a turnover here. Malo Taumua. The only interception on the year, and he's a defensive lineman. Again underneath, again to Polaris. And about a nine-yard pickup. 
The one thing Polaris has done very well here in the first half, James, he seems to make the first guy miss almost every time. And even though he gets tackled immediately afterwards, you say, oh, well, so what? It's always an additional three, four yards that starts to wear on you a little bit. And obviously on a night like this, as you pointed out the heat, fatigue is going to be a factor. And evidently, he got enough for a first down. Greg McMacken, two stints as a defensive coordinator under June Jones. Both times he was there, they won the WAC championship. Hawaii picked to finish fifth in the preseason. Alexander and Polaris just keep on coming across the 40-yard line. UNLV tries to shake it up with the blitz, but Alexander has plenty of time, and with man coverage, his eyes light up. And he throws that deep out route, kind of a tweener between an out and a corner, and puts it right on the money. So 3.30 left to play in the first half. Here goes Alexander again, and he connects. Big strike to Bradley. <laughs> 39-yard touchdown. To the left of your screen, you got man coverage, and there's nobody in the middle of the field. Absolutely no help at all for Chris Jones. And Alexander's eyes had to light up because that was like stealing. There's the Honolulu boy, Malo Taumua, the junior, slow to get up. Well, you can see him not getting any pressure, but spreading the field out and just no help in the middle of the field. Easy throw. Well, they tend to, Malo will take a quick break and be right back to Vegas. Now about these Hawaii boys. Lighten it up right now. There is a place where the search for cancer's cure happens to the sounds of John Coltrane. There is a place where a Nobel laureate teaches how to write from your heart while some of the nation's leading scientists teach how to think with your head. Great art takes a measure of science. Great science takes a measure of art. The great university is built where they converge. UNLV. Well, UNLV was driving and a ball ricocheted after the big hit and an interception by Richard Torres. And 91 yards later, and eight plays, it's the Warriors who score another touchdown. Here's Enos to try to make it 17 to seven. Extra point is good. Well, Todd, last year, Omar Clayton had a streak, 173 straight passes going without an interception. He only threw four all of last year, and he's got two picks tonight. And look at the yardage already by Greg Alexander. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I didn't have it in my head. I was thinking, you know, I saw him going up and down the field, and I was thinking it was more like around 200 yards, but 282. That's nearly, you can see the, for yourself, that's nearly 10 yards in attempt. And an outstanding number for most quarterbacks is somewhere between seven and a half and eight. So obviously Alexander's having a big night. I guess all those five and six yard completions do add up. Of course, that last one didn't hurt. Alexander, the Juco transfer from Santa Rosa College. And there's the former walk-on, Omar Clayton, ready to get back in with under three and a half to play in the first half and try to answer. The 
looking for a little bit of help out of the return man, Deontay Purvis. Here's the kick from Eno. Purvis will bring it out. And the good wedge there for him, but it's Pookela Ahmad on the stop. Purvis a little upset with himself. He had a cut to the left and to get to the outside, he might have gone. Good blocking at the point of attack. So plenty of time for this offense to take it down. And as we've talked about throughout this first half, if you can go into the halftime locker room, Todd, only trailing by three points, a 17-14 score, you got to look at that as a victory, UNLV to receive the second half kickoff. Easier said than done, though, when you've got Warriors flying around like that, Channing Trotter with the reception. And Toby's going to take it a step further with Omar Clayton for us. Well, yeah, you guys have been talking about Greg Alexander and how patient he's been. He's gone short, and then he ends up going deep on that last play to Bradley. Well, that's part of the problem with Clayton is he hasn't been patient. As you see in these clips, he's going, he's going to that route before, in the pre-snap read, he's already deciding ahead of time where he's going to throw, and that's been a problem for him. He needs to be patient on these dinks and dunks like he just did right there if UNLV is going to be successful. Thanks, Toby. There's a good guy to dink and dunk it, too. Ryan Wolf. And here's a little look at what he's talking about, Todd. Well, he, he, Toby makes a very cogent point with regards to the first read. It seems to me that when he snaps, he's going right there. See his eyes fixated in one spot. He's got to look around the field. He's got to distribute the ball to some other people. Goes right back at Wolf. It was Richard Torres trailing underneath and Spencer Smith almost with the interception. Here's the... But what we've commented on Alexander's accuracy, that's been a problem for Clayton tonight. James coming into this game, he was 72% now in this game. Nowhere close to that figure. Five wides for the Rebs on second and 10. And a late hit. As flags come down, this may be a little bit of help here for the Rebels on offense. I think they're going to get, get Tufanga for clobbering an offensive lineman. The sportsman-like conduct, 49 on the defense. 20, 15 yard penalty. The result of the penalty will be first down. Now, I realize, James, that I'm, I'm a little older than you. Do you ever remember as a youngster the phrase from your father, sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me? Of course, I use that today. People were making fun of me on the way in. <laughs> I just, I, I, I'm just amused by the idea of a taunting rule, as if you can't ignore that. But it's a part of what's, it's a part of contemporary football now. So what you're saying is, Tafunga wasn't showing much Ohana. No, he didn't, he didn't have the spirit of Aloha right then. <laughs> Like Greg Mack had talking yesterday, said these guys have togetherness. They have Ohana, even though they haven't been together very long. There's Omar Clayton. Lays Soares with the stop, his fourth tackle of the night. That was a good play for this reason. Clayton needed to mix it up a little bit. He needs to let them know that he can run with the football. Make a defender commit to him, because up to this point, he hasn't done that very often. Here's the blitz for Hawaii, coming off the edge. And Clayton down the field, he does connect! Jeremy Robinson! Everybody in Sam Boyd holding their breath. 42-yard touchdown pass. Lemetrius Johnson needs to keep running instead of jumping. It's tough because Clayton does a great job buying time. Now watch number two jump. But the ball is just over the top. He found himself peeking in the backfield. And that's a no-no for a defensive back. And as a result, Jeremy Robinson is the beneficiary of the touchdown. A 
Watson's extra point is good. It's an enormous advantage when you have that mobile quarterback that can buy time. Goes up, mistimes his jump just a hair, but even better off running with his man. And as a result, the Rebels are back in this game, only down three. And you know, Todd, when you talk offensive weapons and receivers, you talk Ryan Wolf, you talk Roddle and Anthony this year. Michael Johnson can really run. Philip Payne, Payne caught so many big touchdowns. And Jeremy Robinson leading all receivers tonight for UNLV. Three catches and 69 yards as you look at that drive summary. Well, as I mentioned in the studio, this, this being a three-point game is really bizarre. And let's not forget here, a minute and 35 seconds, I don't want to be cliche and say it's an eternity, but it's certainly plenty of time for this run and shoot offense to get down the field. UNLV Rowdy is starting to make some noise now as their Rebels are within three with about a minute and a half left in the first half. It's Polaris from his own end zone. Busting up the wedge there in a hurry. That Rebel kick cover team. So a lot of energy now on the side of the guys in scarlet and gray. If you're in the end zone and you hesitate, kneel down. Polaris couldn't quite decide. And his indecision in running out has cost him some, some field position there at the 13-yard line. So that should energize the defense of UNLV. But Alexander is the one who's got a lot of confidence now. He's been stroking these last couple of series. Both sides, James, with two timeouts left apiece. And just as you mentioned, that's an, an eternity for Hawaii. Also, if you're throwing it every down, you have a couple incomplete passes. Could be good for UNLV. Three-man rush. Alexander throws nice it catch. behind Bradley. And absolutely, Todd, going back to get it on his hip. And a first down, the sticks will move. One of the things they're doing here is that it, it, it's almost like a prevent defense for UNLV. They can't afford that luxury. That's an underneath crossing route that ends up getting about 12 or 13 yards. They can't do that. A flag down, not everybody set. Pass complete underneath to Polaris. A little bit too much hurry up in the hurry up there. Illegal motion for three on the offense. Five yard penalty, first down. At the end of this half, James, the offense is rarely fatigued, but defensively you can see there are guys with hands on their hips and breathing hard. And that's after having been on the bench. UNL defense has, UNLV defense has spent far too much time on the field. And give them credit, they come with some big plays. But even with those big plays, monster numbers for Alexander. Javante Taylor, as Toby mentioned earlier, one of the top receivers for Hawaii, unable to spell some of the guys on offense. Hard rush by Champ underneath, but he gets picked up. Alexander's going to tuck it and run out of bounds. Back near the original line of scrimmage. You mentioned that hard rush and that cost him earlier and it could have cost them there. He's trying so hard, Bochamp is, to get to the quarterback that he's losing contain on the outside. And that contain buys extra time for number 12 to look downfield. Sometimes, sometimes it's best, as you well know as a defender, sometimes it's best not to make a play. Just do your responsibility. Because now what's happening is the yards pile up and, oh, I want to do this, I want to make this play. And then when you do that, you're out of position. And that's when the other guy gets a big play. And you also give your guys inside an extra beat to get to that quarterback. Here's Polaris, a little swing pass out the other side. And a pickup of about nine yards. It was second down and 11. We'll bring up third down and two. I'm surprised here they're not calling timeout. I know they've got two timeouts here. Now they tell, oh, they really cost themselves. James, that was at least 11 seconds there that they cost themselves. Coach McMacken can't be very happy with that, especially with a team that really, the run and shoot is, is really designed to be a two-minute offense. 
as a calculated error on the part of the Cognoscetti there, the offensive Cognoscetti rather, for the Rainbows. Well, Mike Sanford told us that the one thing about this year that they needed to get over the top, and as Toby made reference to it earlier about Rebel Rising, is these are the sorts of games, the close games that they want to win. And reference was, you know, the reference was made earlier about the resilience of this team after last week's very heartbreaking loss there with the field goal at the end, that they need to get over the top and they need to make the plays in games like this. Four of their last six losses came when UNLV had the lead with three minutes or less to play. Coming up at the half. That hurts. We'll take you around the league. Not the best day for the Mountain West Conference. The Pokes got beat up. Not much offense there in Boulder, Colorado. And no joy in the Beehive State. No, sir. So Bradley underneath, showing you he can scoot. Look at him go across the 50. A good block downfield. Wright Jackson. What an amazing job by Leon Wright Jackson of hustling down to buy his receiver an extra 10 yards. One of the advantages of the quick screen in addition to the quickness is going back across the grain. You've got red shirts that are all stuck. Look at this. He's able to go east, east to west isn't always a bad thing when you have those kind of feet. A 30 yard pickup. So now 14 seconds remain in the first half. There you see the Yellow mark right above Hawaii. They've got one timeout left. Three-man rush for UNLV. That's Champ, the pressure, but he can't bring him down. And there's the big body you mentioned earlier, just like a Roethlisberger. Jason Bochamp was all over Alexander, but he can't drop him. Well, it's got to be a little disillusioning when the quarterback is bigger than you are as the linebacker. Bochamp 6'3 and about 235, and of course, Alexander 6'4, 240, heads up to throw that ball out of bounds, not simply to save a sack, James, but to save the time. Seven seconds left with a timeout. They can still throw the ball in the middle of the field, get a timeout, and kick a field goal. But it has to be a quick throw. And they also have to get this off the plate clock down now to five seconds. Three. They do get it off. And they're diving backwards. They, they need to, they've got to use that timeout. You're right. Royce Pollard does come up with the catch. This is one of the advantages now in the college game of coaches being able to call it. You know, there he catches it, and you can see 3 2 1, and nobody on the field is able to do it. But the coach standing next to the side judge is able to go timeout, 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 and save some time. Watch the catch. You saw the official come over. Now he's in bounds, down in bounds. You'll see the official. Watch, he's gonna he's gonna circle his arm, letting you know the time. But there's the coach right there on top of it. Time out, time out. As we mentioned earlier, what little wind there is will be at the back of Venus. A 47-yard attempt. Funaki, the backup running back to hold last year's quarterback. Ingram to snap. And when given time, Scott Enos can get it done. Now two for three in the first half. And a 47-yard field goal to end the first half of play. Now it makes me wonder why in those other situations they went for it. The kid kicked it into the screen. What a difference it makes when you let me get ready, he says. Look at that. You let me get ready. I can punch that through. That's probably, that's pro look at how high up on the screen. That's It's probably somewhere in the neighborhood about a 54-yard kick as we check in with Toby. Uh, hey, Coach Mack, talk to us about the field goal at the end of the half. How does that help the momentum? Well, that, that helped a lot. You know, the offense was able to move it down and get in position to kick a field goal. So going in with a six-point lead is really good at this point in time. The offense is moving the ball well, but for some reason, other than the two big plays, when you get it into the other, into UNLV's territory, the offense seems to stall a little bit. Why is that? Well, you know, we, we just have to improve on a few things. We're, we're moving the ball. And, uh, you know, we've just got to finish the drives.
It's very important to finish the drives. Any changes on defense for the second half? You know, we may use a little more four-man front. We're, we're a little minus on the defensive ends. We have a couple guys injured. So we've been playing a th sort of a 3-4 defense in the first half. And, you know, we, we gave up that one touchdown, which was just a gimme. We should have stayed on top of it. It should have been. And we lost contain on the other side. So we made a mistake, and, and it hurt us. Well, thanks a lot, Coach. Good luck in the second half. All right, thank you, Toby. And Greg McMacken and the Warriors won half away from finishing an outstanding road trip. They've been gone for nine days, 20 to 14 at Sam Boyd. Let's get it back to Denver in the studio, guys. Come on in to the Denver studios of the Mountain, everyone. Marius Payton alongside Jay. College football on the Mountain is brought to you by Dodge. Live life to the fullest. Dodge, grab life. And by the United States Marine Corps, the few, the proud, the Marines. Tight one at halftime here at Sam Boyd Stadium between the UNLV Rebels and the Hawaii Warriors. 20 to 14, our halftime score, and this the 19th meeting between these two schools. James Bates, Todd Christensen. The last two were losses for UNLV and very lopsided. Remember, two years ago, Colt Brennan and the number 22 team in the nation came in here and ran up and down the field. But Brennan only had 298 yards in that game, the only game that year that he was under 300. Who's this Greg Alexander guy? Well, one of the things is Greg Alexander at 66% completion. He's already thrown for over 340 yards in the game. I think the big difference in those two situations when you contrast the game is that UNLV is lucky that all those yards haven't turned into points. And maybe that's one of the reasons why they've been playing off as, as much as they have. Alexander's had free reign to go underneath and throw the ball to his receivers underneath. And of course, that has set up on a couple of occasions some longer throws that he's been able to get downfield like this one to Greg Solis. But Alexander has been tremendous in the first half in terms of his accuracy as well as his decision making. The ball's out short, long, intermediate. Alexander can make all the throws. And of course, we also saw his strength in avoiding the sacks because of his ability to hang in the pocket and continue to run now on the other side you got Omar Clayton who's been a little more inconsistent we mentioned his 70 percent completion percentage he's nine for 17 here in the first half and really has not found a rhythm he had a couple of nice plays but he also had a couple of hurried throws to where he just wasn't getting the sort of rhythm that he wanted earlier this one of course ended up being the touchdown to Robinson and I wonder James we when we had talked with Mike Sanford he had discussed the idea that Clawson would get in the game but he's only had one run and that's for the touchdown and you see the contrast in numbers. I wonder if we might see number six some in the second half. Well, Toby caught up with Mike Sanford on his way out of the locker room. Toby, what did Coach have to say? Well, in regards to Clawson, yeah, we will see more of him. We're going to see more of that uh, that two-quarterback set where they're both in at the same time. He's not going to start him or anything like that, but he said we'll definitely see a little bit more of Mike Clawson. On defense, despite the cover, despite all the yards that Greg Alexander's thrown for, he said to me, the main problem with the defense is we've got to tackle better. And then on offense, he just said if Omar Clayton stops forcing the ball, we're going to be just fine. So he didn't seem too upset about things, but he said we need to tackle better and stop forcing things in there, guys. Will we see that pinstripe suit coat again tonight, Toby? I thought you were a tough football player. <laughs> Got rid of it there. I ditched the jacket. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Toby. There's Mike Sanford talking things over with strength and conditioning coach here, John Greco. His Rebels won the toss and deferred to the second half. So trailing by only six, it'll be... Deontay Purvis deep to receive this Scott Enos kickoff. Enos, two field goals, one from 47 yards out to end the first half. And slicing through there to stir things up on Deontay Purvis is Hawaii 5 0, Mana Lolo tie. Well, UNLV needs to get some rhythm right away. They need to get a couple of first downs. They need to keep that run and shoot off the field. It will be the OC, Omar Clayton, to take the first snap here in the second half. 
And off inside to Trotter. Channing Trotter gets about five. You know, James, in the first half, he had three carries for 32 yards, and that's not a bad idea. Starting off with about a five-yard gain. I I've often wondered if the offense for UNLV can make some adjustments because one of the things, remember last year when they had Frank the Tank Summers, we didn't see him get utilized as much as he might. And there's nothing, nothing wrong with having a running game now. Instead, the Rebels go five wides. Here comes Trotter joining Clayton in the backfield. Underneath pass to Ryan Wolf. Stops and cuts it up a yard shy. It'll be third down and one for UNLV. A lot of praise has been heaped on number 88, and right there you saw part of what it was, and that's his ability to get north and south quickly. Sometimes receivers get the momentum and they start scooting east and west. Number 88 gets upfield. Because he has the big body at 6'2", 210, he's able to get that much closer to the first down. Three of six in the first half. UNLV on third down. They need a yard. Trotter has just that, still not down, until he crosses the 40. The sticks will move. Kiesel Kauhane on the stop. One of the things with both the spread and the run and shoot, James, is that you rarely have that bruiser in the backfield. So when you come up sometimes third and two or fourth and one and like that, it, it's tough, you know, because you got the young guy back there. And of course, when you go out of the shotgun, that gives the defense a little more time for penetration. Well, they lost the bruiser. They yeah. didn't always take advantage of Frank the Tank no. this Summers. They miss him now, though. And again to the ground. About five dark bonnets there waiting on Channing Trotter. Blaze Soares leading the charge. Well, the phrase about he who hesitates is lost is certainly apt here. Well, there's the hesitation, sits behind, waits, waits. Well, you can't do that. And the pursuit catches him from the backside. A loss of two, second down and a dozen. For UNLV. There's Ryan Wolf. Wolf had to come back for it, and he pounds on the turf there at midfield because he had a few steps. Could have picked up about 10 more, possibly. We had Corey Paredes in coverage on him, and that certainly is a mismatch, the outside linebacker. And if he could have caught that in stride, he might still be running. So again, a third down. And short. This time it's two yards to go and two backs in the backfield. It's Cox and Trotter flanking Clayton. They'll run the option. And a great hustle play that inside. Was. Blaze Soares from his inside linebacker spot. Excellent angle. And the Rebels are going to be short of the first down, it looks like. Great pursuit in the secondary, too. This is a bad distribution in terms of the option. Now watch coming off the block. There's Soares, but right there at the end of the play to push him out of bounds is Jeremy Bryant. And I'm not sure that the temptation here isn't to go for it. And I think that's what they're going to do, James. Watch the alert draw offsides as well. This is one thing the coaches wanted to do in this game. They're going to have to call timeout. Yeah. Yeah, the coach, Mike Sanford, called timeout. The play clock had gone down to four. Crucial play here. There's no way they want to take any chances with this. So early on here in the second half, got a big fourth down. Fourth down and one for UNLV. Opening possession here in the second half, trailing by six points. Todd Berry, the offensive coordinator, and Mike Sanford have sent the play in with Omar Clayton. And a play action pass, they try to go big. And enough for a first down. Good job defensively, but not enough as Jordan Barrett, who had a touchdown taken away on a penalty earlier, catches the ball with Smith trailing. Well, it's interesting because Spencer Smith really wasn't fooled. He's right with him. That's a nice touch. And boy, I tell you what, that is a great catch. 
Looked like he caught both ends of the ball. Mike Sanford's pleased with that. Very fortunate there. I've been impressed with Cal Lee's defense, a young defense, a very aggressive defense, but they've played smart football as well. The Rebels get the sticks moving. And moving on the ground now, that football, Channing Trotter, another big rip, nine yards that time. Trotter once again, the inside of the offensive line for UNLV able to create some gaps. And at the risk of being redundant, which I run that risk often, under redundancy redundant, Clayton has to be pulling that ball out periodically again because he could have some big runs here. Taking a page out of Nevada Arena with that pistol. Hitting the backfield, and legs keep churning, but no gain for Channing Trotter. Liko Sata Satele back there. There's Tafunga as well. Here's a situation where I think Trotter might have tackled himself. Watch the left here. I think something might have opened up. Instead, he just runs behind, has his head down. Look at the gap right here. If he cuts back against the grain, he's going to pick up at least five or six yards instead now, third and short. Two tights for the Rebels. And hit hard, and looks like he's going to be half a yard shy again, Todd. But just as you pointed out, if you're going to go for it on fourth down in midfield, you're certainly going to go for it. Just outside the 30, or just outside the 35. On these fourth and shorts, does it surprise you that they continue to go shotgun? It really does. It does because the front seven, that you know, whatever the timing is, you want to put the watch on it. Eight tenths of a second, 1.3 seconds. It gives them that much more time to penetrate. Warrior fans making some noise. A lot of them in the house. Another fourth and one. Here's Trotter, running hard, full head of steam, and the sticks will move one more time. Impressive drive thus far for the Rebels to open the second half. I give Trotter credit there. He does not hesitate at all. He just cuts up once again, cutting across to, 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 to nail the rusher is Jason Heath. Remember, he was the one that had that key block on the touchdown by Clausen. Trotter isn't interested in a big run there. It's about going north and south. And as a former defensive coordinator who still has his two cents in where the defense is concerned, head coach Greg McMacken, not very happy. Also can't be happy two of two, the Rebels offensively on fourth down conversions in this half on this drive. This one's coming back. As Clayton and Wolf connect, but probably a hold on that offensive line. Looked like they cut Joe Hawley with the sticky hands. I've never seen there are two fouls on the play. Personal foul, leg whip, 59. Personal foul, late hit, 90. His penalty's offset. First down. So you're right, Todd, it was Holly guilty for the Rebels, but it's Purcell, who, though dinged up, has had an excellent game thus far. I wonder if Purcell is the one that was leg whipped and retaliated. As a defender, you, I know that if that happened to you, you're not very happy about it. So a first down and five. Five wide receivers for the Rebel offense. And the pump, and again, thrown a little bit behind Ryan Wolf. You'd like to see the young man that Mike Sanford calls one of the best receivers in the country catch that ball in stride and show us how he gets vertical. But again, give, this is where you're comfortable with your receiver. Look at that. He aims it a little bit, and your right throws it behind. 
but it shows the confidence he has in number 88 that it's not a great throw, but he still comes up with the catch. Rebels inside the Dodge red zone. Cox and Trotter the back. It's C.J. Cox put on his back by Maya Tong and company. Kiesel Kahane back there as well, the senior linebacker. Okay, I'm going to beat a dead horse. He pulls that ball, ball out and runs by himself. Probably walks into the end zone. Do you, do you perceive, maybe this is just me and I could be wrong, do you perceive a tentativeness where Clayton's concerned? I do, and I'm not sure why. He had the bruise knee last week, but it's been, he's been cleared all week. MRI on Monday was negative. He goes up top for Payne, the fade route, and he caught it, but he was out of bounds. It may seem strange to say very good coverage because the ball was caught. But watch at the end of the play. He has no place to go. This is a very nice job, actually, by Tank Hopkins because he battles at the end, but there is no place to go. He runs out of real estate. And so one number four bests another number four. Payne may have pushed a little bit there as well. Still manned up down at the bottom on Hopkins again. Omar doesn't look that way, though. He pumps and runs. And on third down and goal from the 12, Clayton gets about five, and here go comes the field goal unit for UNLV. He second-guessed himself. He had the crossing route, but he didn't think he'd get into the end zone, so he pulled it down and took off. Watch, you're going to see the cross. The ball's... A red shirt's going to cross his face right there. He thinks about it, but then realizes that Anthony's not going to get in the end zone. So he heads up field, but a few too many green, sh green clad rainbows close in on him as now the 25 yard field goal attempt. It's Kyle Watson. And it hits the upright, and it's no good. It's not just hitting the upright and losing the three points. That was a hard-earned drive. Nearly nine minutes worth as you go down the field, convert to fourth downs. It has to result in points, but it doesn't. Well, Mike Sanford, the offensive coordinator for Urban Meyer at the University of Utah in 2004, the undefeated run, BCS busting, and his offense here to start the second half eats up 8.48 but comes up empty. A 25-yard field goal attempt by Kyle Watson. Bangs off the upright, and here comes Alexander and the Warriors. Dances out of it, but they get him the second time around. There's Bochamp. Bochamp, it's unfortunate because he's not in that position very often, but watch at the end of the play. He has an opportunity for a strip. Alexander's going to break free, but he doesn't feel him coming. Look at Bochamp pursuit. Now strip it right there. Pull the right hand. Instead, he goes for the tackle. James, if he goes for the ball, that's a fumble. He gets a fumble, and they have a turnover. Earlier, though, remember, he missed the tackle, so he yeah. wanted to be sure. Good point. Good point. Here, Bochamp won't have his hand on the ground. Back to his linebacker position. Led the conference last year. Shovel pass, bam. There he is. Back-to-back -back big plays for the senior from Steel Canyon High School in San Diego. He looks to me to be a little taller than 6'3". He looks more like 6'4". And with that wingspan, he's not going to be fooled often. He, or even if he is fooled a little bit, he reaches out and makes the tackle. You're right. Nice back-to-back -back TFLs for double three. We had the Nevada game here last year, and Bochamp had 21 tackles in the loss to Reno. A third down and 14. Alexander goes down the middle, and it's almost picked off. Terrence Lee, who's been very active in this game, can't hang on to it. And you see Chris Jones jumping up and down because he was waiting on it. Watch Terrence Lee cut in front. Jones is waiting on the pick. Look at him right there. You see, he's waiting on that pick. 
Oh, nuts, I'd have had that. Regardless, a great stop for UNLV. Three and out, which I believe is the first time tonight, James, for the UNLV defense. Mike Grant was deep to receive, and that ball takes a UNLV hop, and it'll be Rebel ball at their own 45, outstanding field position. Well, as we're handed out rosters here, arriving at the game, you look up and down at all these numbers of guys out on the field, and number 54 remains on the roster, and he remains in the hearts of this entire Rebel Nation. UNLV linebacker Bryce Salvi, on July 3rd this summer, was skateboarding at Lake Arrowhead, California, and suffered a severe head injury. Remained in California for most of the summer and just recently flown back home to Dallas, Texas. And the sophomore linebacker, we pray for him and his family and well, Mike Sanford and the entire UNLV program thinking about their man, number 54. Get well soon, Bryce. His father was a former teammate of mine in my brief stint with the Dallas Cowboys. You visit that website, and Mike and his wife, Melinda, have posted a message here just in the last couple days. Interim AD, Jerry Koloski, the most recent post on there, and what a special kid. That's fighting hard right now, back in Dallas, Texas, his hometown. His roommate here, Austin Harrington, a backup tight end on the team, just earned a scholarship in Ely after a summer taught of going back and forth to, to be with Bryce over there in California to, to sit at his bedside and try to help him back. You know, and it, it was a little bit bittersweet because he couldn't share it with his roommate and, and fellow Texan from the Metroplex. And there he is. Harrington said that Bryce wouldn't let him pay the electric bill because Bryce was on scholarship, but he wasn't. He said, you work just as hard as me. I'll take care of it, buddy. So thoughts and prayers there, Bryce Salter. Clayton was wise to hang on to that ball. Jeremy Bryant from his cornerback spot just, just took off for the running back. If he'd have pitched it, that might have been an interception and a touchdown for Hawaii going the other way. As it is, it's second and seven. There's the rush. Clayton stands in there, throws it behind Wolf again, and a good job there trailing the linebacker, Blaze Sorez. The pressure coming up the middle from Mayatonga. They're lucky to get any yards at all. Mayatonga was right in the face of Clayton. Clayton able to deliver the ball despite it being a short game. Certainly better than a sack. Big third down coming up, third and six. And Philip Hayne cuts it off right at the sticks. A good route run. And a good hookup. The chains will move for UNLV. You know, Philip Payne, they're just they're waiting for him to develop him into a star. Only 10 catches coming into this game for only 101 yards. It's a 10-yard average. Early last year, remember, he had six or seven catches in about seven, eight games, and he got hurt. They're waiting for him to develop his route running and to be just as effective in the field of play as he is in the red zone. Quarterback draw, and Clayton gets a couple. For a team, Todd, that really prides itself on their one-two punch at quarterback, you mentioned early a little bit of tentativeness by Omar Clayton. Maybe surprised that we haven't seen Mike Clawson other than the two-yard plunge for a touchdown? But no, I really am, simply because he was so effective last week when he came in. 10 for 13 and a couple of touchdowns. Big touchdowns. There's a... Big hookup almost, and usually sure-handed Ryan Wolf gets banged around a little bit and can't hang on to it. Mana Silva. Shows courage in the middle of the field, knowing that he's going to get hit. Silva clobbers him, catches just enough of the ball to separate him. You know, if he hit, if he does the usual and just, you know, tries to go for the knockout at the chest, Wolf probably holds on but it was skewed just enough to separate him from the football. It's a tough defensive football team. What do they have on third down and eight for the Rebels here? And again, 
Payne hooking up with Philip Payne. First down, UNLV. Well, just as we talked about Philip Payne and his ability to run routes and catch the ball in the middle of the field, he delivers. And so does Clayton. Hangs in against the rush, has the dig route. Payne able to stay on his feet, get some additional yardage. Setting up shot just outside the 25-yard line, and number four is proving himself to be more than just a jump ball receiver. Payne from right here in Vegas, Western High School. That's him, the shuffle motion. He looks his way again. And another first down. Down inside the Dodge red zone go the UNLV Rebels. One of the things here in the second half, the numbers for Clayton have really risen. The numbers for Clayton, remember, 9 for 17 at the half. But here in the third quarter, he has been outstanding. He has been on the money. And the one thing that they wanted to do is to keep this Hawaii offense off the field. They've had three plays is all they've had as Hawaii here in this third stanza with the clock running in a minute 40. The offense, number 80, entered the game, and then went back to the bench. Five-yard penalty, first down. That's Mike Bearfield, so we've already seen a, an illegal substitution call on Hawaii. And this time it goes against UNLV. And just what you don't want, you saw the leg whip earlier. You got to drive got going, and then you get a little five-yard hiccup. And what happened last time? Yeah. The, the momentum, big momentum killer. Important for Clayton and the Rebels to get it back right now on first down and 15. They can get a first down at the one. Eight of 10 in the second half, Clayton, for 76 yards. The sophomore hangs on and throwing a strike on the giddy up Omar Clayton. We talked about the inaccuracy of Clayton the first half, barely 50%. Now he's nine for 11. And that's a nice catch by Watkins, but it's number two that makes this play with his feet, throwing back across his body, leading Watkins into the ball. Excellent play by Clayton ad libbing. And a nice reach by Watkins. That's a pretty good catch because that is behind him. Again, they go for the fade. This time, the big man can pull it down. Philip Payne, touchdown. You know that old song, I Got Your Number? It's number four on number four, but this time the red number four wins. Remember, Hopkins was able to fence him off that last time. This time, Payne is the one that does the fencing up. Does a great job with his body. And remember, James, last year, he was only on 180 pounds. This year, he's over 200, a little bit stronger. Shows his power right there and how to utilize his body. And this has been astonishing here, James. In this quarter, the time of possession has been all UNLV Rebels as they take a one-point lead. It's so, it feels so good to have the trust of your quarterback in that situation. That's a ball that easily could have been picked. That's not a great throw at all by Clayton. But Payne makes him look awfully, awfully good. As he did a couple times when needed last year, the upset in the desert, Tempe, Arizona. Upsetting 13th ranked Arizona State. What an emotional win. Biggest win in the program's history for UNLV. And then again against Iowa State, it was Philip Payne. As a freshman, now as a sophomore, you mentioned 200 pounder from Western High School right here in Vegas. And how about the second half coming out of the locker room for Clayton, 10 of 12 and 92 yards and that touchdown in the third quarter. Jake to Pollard this time, and Royce Pollard's first return of the night. Well, one thing we can say, James, with regards to the UNLV defense, we talked about a little fatigue there at the end of the first half. I'd have to say that here in the third quarter, they're well rested. Yes. <laughs> three plays. Three plays, <laughs> yeah. 
But of course, that also means so is the offense. Now Alexander not worried. 23 seconds remaining in the third quarter, only down by one. See if he can find his rhythm. Four-man rush. Oh, nice catch. And big playmaker going up and plucking it is Rodney Bradley. Paulo on the stop, but it's a first down and then some for the Warrior offense. They say that they say that the runner shoots you cut off half the field, but Alexander surveyed the entirety of it. And the offensive line, who we should mention here, Kia Hisataki, Estes. Euro and Latuli have been giving him plenty of time to throw, and in that case, he was able to survey the entirety of the field, go to his third read, and come up with their initial first down here in the second half as the third quarter concludes. And that's the end of the third quarter, a one-point ball game here at Sam Boyd Stadium. All kinds of action going on in Las Vegas tonight. We've had a big-time boxing match, and we've had a slugfest coming up. UNLV in Hawaii. Time to ante up as we head to the fourth quarter. Before we get things going, let's peek back at those Dodge Keys. Well, shoot and run. It shows how much I know. 20 yards rushing. You make them one-dimensional. They're okay. The defense has played well for Hawaii. They have not confused them at all in terms of the secondary. But only three plays over 15 yards. But, of course, Clayton has been outstanding here in this third quarter to give them the lead. Five-man rush, and the Rebels get him. It's champ again, Jason Bochamp. Atui in there as well. You know, give Bochamp credit for this, James. He's obviously a star player. And when you ask your star player to do something that he's not altogether comfortable with or getting out of, as I say, his comfort zone, his willingness to do that shows a lot. You've got a star player who's willing to go in there and do things that, that, you know what, aren't necessarily what he does, but he's willing to do it to make a contribution. He's had two sacks tonight and continues, continues to put pressure on Alexander here in the second half. Just played in the fourth quarter against Oregon State, did Bochamp. He had five tackles in a sack against the Beavers. Three-man rush this time for UNLV. Connecting one more time with Bradley. Pass is complete to Rodney Bradley and the junior from Dallas having a huge night. This is a great throw by Alexander as you've got to weave your way through three. Watch in the middle of the field right here. You're going to see three red shirts going to the other side of the field. Bradley on the kind of semi-skinny post. Look at that right over the top of two. You had another red shirt that had the opportunity to break on the ball. That's a terrific throw by Alexander. And to the ground. We haven't seen that in a while. Hawaii. And Wright Jackson, the senior transfer from the University of Nebraska. Check that green. His first carry into the ball game, the junior from Portland. Well, outside of outside of Alexander scrambles, James, that was the fourth running play of the game right there. The fourth. And so I always find that interesting, you know, because your father's a defensive coordinator. What do they always tell you? Very first thing, we want to make him one-dimensional. We want to make him one-dimensional. Okay. And they say, that's fine. We're got, good. Got to stop the run. <laughs> okay. We'll throw against you. A pickup of three for Green. Second down and seven. Alexander stands in strong. Also strong. Solace to hold on to that one as he's popped by Ziegler. Looks to be a yard shy of the sticks. See, I have to tell you that as a tight end, when you get knocked like that, okay, yeah, it's a good hit, and you're excited about it, but I hung onto the ball, as Salas does here. He takes a lick, but he's able to hold onto the ball. So I'm confused as to what the big victory is because now they got third and very short. But that's just me. Green still the back. Big Greg Alexander goes under center and uses that 240-pound frame to plow forward, and this is going to be close on the spot. Well, it looked to me that he got past the line. I thought he had it. You see the time of possession for the third quarter. Wow. I wasn't sure what was going on. The quarterback under center here tonight didn't seem yeah. right. <laughs> right. <laughs> wow, that's really old school. Quarterback <laughs> under center. 
It's funny because I remember being drafted by the Dallas Cowboys some 30 years ago, and what a novelty it was because Roger Staubach was in the shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> Times change. And a half yard shy. The Warriors. So we've seen Hawaii go for it on fourth down twice in the first half. And they will again. Both of those attempts unsuccessful. UNLV went for it twice on fourth down in the second half. Both of those attempts were big difference. Fourth and ten and fourth and six when they did it the first time. Fourth and the length of the football is a different story. And I'm thinking that you've got that quarterback with 6'4", 240. He's just going to sneak ahead. Tavaseu is the nose guard at 355 yards, but going up and over. With the nose tackle is Alexander, and the chains will move. Fresh set of downs for the Warriors. Why not use that big body? Let's give Ray Hisataki his due, though. Left guard, 315-pounder, created that gap for him, along with Estes, the two-time all-whack performer at center. That's Polaris in motion. He had a great big first half with the slot back. Up top, Salas, just that easy. Touchdown, Hawaii. 23-yard touchdown. One of the things that happens defensively is you have to spread out. Look right here. There is nobody in the middle of the field. You've got everybody spread out here. And so once this is the point of strength, then the post pattern can come in underneath. Take a look. There is no free safety. Solace is running free. And James Alexander just went over 400 yards throwing for the game. We've got a ball game here at Sam Boyd Stadium after taking their first lead of the game. The Hawaii Warriors come storming right back. Marius, a lot of action here in Las Vegas tonight, my man. Yes, it is, JB. Thank you so much, Marius, alongside Jay Lewenberg, taking in the second half of UNLV in Hawaii. And, Jay, what stands out thus far, UNLV had a great drive to start the second half and came up empty-handed. You know, until that last drive, it looked like UNLV had exactly what they needed for their game plan, made great adjustments at halftime. Even though they come up with no points, you saw the time of possession in the third quarter was dominant by UNLV. Omar Clayton came out and he was making all kinds of plays. You see him scramble, get a great first down, and then you have Payne gets nothing but another touchdown. This is what he did all last year is that guy's just money in the end zone. I mean, you just throw it up and he makes plays. And, you know, the thing that I really think is interesting, too, is to see the way that they're going to respond now because their defense had a long rest, but then they give up another offensive touchdown here to Hawaii that now takes the lead. But if you're UNLV, your offense is clicking right now. And they got to click again because Hawaii just took the lead. That's right. So, I mean, Hawaii is a very talented team, and that run and shoot, they're very potent, and you've seen it. So, I, it's going to be a great finish to this game. I'm excited. Yes, it is. Todd called it earlier. It's going to be a shootout. Let's get you back out to Las Vegas where James and Todd will take you through the finish of the game. We'll see you afterwards for the Mountain Cat. All right. Thanks a lot, Marius. The UNL defense may need to call Honolulu's finest dog, the Bounty Hunter, and put him on Greg Salas because they have not been able to stop the leading receiver in the nation coming in averaging 187 yards a game. Just scored another touchdown to put the Warriors back on top. James Bates, Todd Christensen, got Toby Christensen down on the field here at Sam Boyd Stadium. Glad to have you with us tonight in a very hot Las Vegas, Nevada. And a game that would bring a lot more heat to the desert with 11.34 remaining two teams Scrapping for a win. Here comes the sophomore Purvis.
Corey Paradis, a lot of these starters on defense continue to cover punts and kicks. It was Paradis on the stop. And you know, James, when Mike Sanford said to Toby about the possibility of Clausen playing, I think his stellar play here on these last couple of drives, going 10 for 12, has now put those plans to rest. Well, just as we talked about those running backs getting lathered up, Omar Clayton seems to hit his, have hit his stride here in the second half. Boot sets up shop and lets it go. He's got Wolf. Ryan Wolf, it's complete across the 25-yard line. Well, Ryan Wolf is not noted for his deep speed, but he runs excellent routes, and this is a terrific throw by Clayton. On the run, takes the break, and throws back against the grain. Great job of fielding that ball. Once again, a little bit behind him. But number 88 comes up with another big play for the Rebels. 53 yards, that hookup. Balls at the 23-yard line of Hawaii. There's Trotter, stumbles a little bit. All that momentum going forward behind that big offensive line, and he'll pick up six. R.J. Kiesel Kauhane, unofficially, we've got him for nine tackles on the night. Linebackers very active for the Warrior D. Now, the fatigue factor that we talked about where UNLV's defense was concerned in the first half, that has to, that has to be appropriate here where Hawaii is concerned. They're on the field the entire third quarter. Again to the ground. And Trotter looked to be dropped for a two-yard loss. Instead, he's going to get a one-yard gain to Funga. Adam dead to rights. Are, are you? Okay. I know I've made this point too much. I'm going to make it again. Why doesn't he pull that ball out? I mean, the young people are all sprinting to whoever's handing the ball. If he pulls it out and takes it by himself, as a, play. as a whole, when a defense is so aggressive, the misdirection, the reverses, and that's exactly what you're talking about on a smaller scale. Yep. That's what's going to work. Things are working, though, in the second half right now for the Rebels. They need four on third down. Out of the backfield, it's Trotter. He's popped and stays in bounds. It'll be a first down UNLV. Great play by the junior running back. We talked earlier about the advantage of being 5'8 and being kind of blocky. Watch, he's going to catch the pass, and he doesn't have the first down, and he's a little bit off balance. Now watch, there's the collision, but he shakes it off. He's only able to shake it off because of his power. Below the waist. Well, that's, I tell you what, nice job by number 32. Here's the play pass, looking for Robinson. He was covered, ball's tipped, hits the ground. Kiesel Kauhane got a big paw on it, and it was almost intercepted by the Warriors. Clayton is very, very fortunate. Look at all the white shirts in the middle of the field. And again, his propensity for throwing the ball behind his receivers, James, we've seen it throughout the game. Receivers have made some good plays for him, but that pop-up right there, oh, goodness. Good fortune for the Rebels that that ball hit the ground. There's the quarterback draw on the trap. Touchdown, UNLV. Okay. Now I can stay quiet about Clayton running with the ball. A long time coming, but pay dirt for the Rebels, and they tie it back up at 27 as Watson will come in to try to hit the extra point. 
and give them their second lead of the game. And it is 28 to 27 with 8.53 remaining and to play. And don't go away because there's going to be an awful lot of football left. This could be one of those old time games to where whoever has the ball last is going to be triumphant. And usually the kind of energy that's reserved for the Thomas and Mack Center, home to the UNLV Run and Rebel basketball team. Filling up Sam Boyd Stadium right now. Having a good time, and the Rebels back on top by one of these Hawaii Warriors. Royce Pollard deep to receive this Jekyll kick. Backpedals into his end zone, and he steps out. Uh-oh. And how about Pollard? Up across the 40-yard line. Could have been a disaster. But James, how many times do you see it happen? Maybe not often, but you do see it happen. The guy hesitates a little bit. The red shirts hesitate with him, and it's almost like a stop and go route. Take a look, he, he, he would, should have been better off. Now he hesitates, now he goes. Now you got some red shirts, you see those that he went past, they overran it a little bit. That enables him to get out to the 40 yard line as if this offense needed any help. Terrific field position for the Rainbows at the 41. And look who ran him down, Ryan Wolf. Ryan Wolf on special teams. There's Solace with the catch up near the first down sticks. Well, it was Ryan Wolf not only on special teams, but on that last series offensively, Toby. Yeah, we've heard all the praise about him. Greatest wide receiver in UNLV history, greatest wide receiver in the country, best wide receiver I've ever coached. But what makes him so great? First of all, his hands. He's got great hands. You've got to have good hands if you want to be considered a good receiver. And he's got the softest pair in the conference. Speed. I know, James, you gave him a hard time about the speed, but don't sleep on him and think he's a possession receiver because as soon as you do, he'll beat you deep for six. And route running. The guy's an absolute technician. Watch how he sets the defender up to make the throw on this next on this next clip. Well, here's Alexander, who dives forward for a first down. When did I ever get on Ryan Wolf about his speed, Toby? Go ahead. Well, James, on that oh. last deep ball, he said you said he's not known for his speed, but that's exactly what happens to a defense. As soon as they sleep on him and think he's a possession guy, he's going to get by you, and he'll score. He'll score deep. Well, Ryan Wolf, big time plays. We saw him a couple flashbacks, a big game in Provo last year against BYU, and he and his Rebels trying to get a big time win. Here against Hawaii. There's Polaris. Oh, and a big tackle by Quinton Pointer. Or it could have been a big gainer. Pointer the junior. That did look like it was going to get more than it did, but Pointer, great pursuit. Polaris gets behind a nice block. The Pointer able to trip his ankle up. Polaris having a big game with double digit catches. It has to be a a relief for Pointer not to wear the big RoboCop yeah. arm brace that he had to wear all of last year in his sophomore year. And that's his seventh stop on the night. Second down and seven. And Bradley, there it is. That little window one more time. Rodney Bradley. Another big pickup from Alexander. This time it's 22 yards. One of the reasons they were able to move Solace in as a slot receiver to give him more opportunities is because of the speed of Bradley outside. Right here, he's going to take off. He's going to do kind of a fade. And once again, peeking in the backfield. You just can't be peeking in the backfield. That's Mike Grant, the defensive back, who gets caught looking at the quarterback. And Alexander's going to take advantage of that every time. Ball's on the 19 for Alexander and the Warriors. Trailing by one. There's Alex Green. Turns it up for a couple. As the clock nears six minutes left in the ballgame. 
Do you wonder if the offensive lineman for Hawaii go, oh, what? I'm going forward? <laughs> right. <laughs> they're not used to it, and they're all seniors, too. Bruce Matthews, the Hall of Fame guard for the Houston Oilers, used to it was interesting because he would say that. He said, come on, give me a chance. Because you know, you're always catching somebody as an offensive lineman. Give me a chance to move forward. Well, there was their chance. Five seniors starting on that offensive line in front of Alexander. There's the fade route. And the flag yeah, does come down. You thought it would come. Mike Grant was doing his best to defend Rodney Bradley, but got his hands all over the junior. But once again, James, here's the situation. Mike Grant doesn't play much normally. He might play some nickel and some dime. But because they have the situations here, he has to cover a top flight receiver. And right there, you can see the interference. He shoves him off. And of course, Bradley does a nice job of doing kind of that fake draw the charge. Hey, I was abused. Drew the flag. Right there in his hip pocket, all he had to do was keep stride for stride and snap that head around. But it's a fresh set of downs and first and goal from the two for the Warriors. Alexander will go back under center. Alex Green's the lone back. Touchdown, Warriors, and they retake the lead. Running behind the left side of the offensive line, you would think that minus the tight end, they'd have a struggle, but they don't. Maya Tong, great job by Kia and Hisataki, creating the gap for Green, and of course now, because of the score, they're gonna have to go for two. They've gone back and forth on this, and now with five and a half minutes remaining, this is the right decision to go for two. Up by five, trying to make it seven. That's Solace in motion. Alexander looks that way. And not on the same page, so the lead will stay right there. But Hawaii back on top, 33 to 28, under five and a half minutes to play here at Sam Boyd Stadium in Las Vegas, Nevada. Greg Alexander, the senior quarterback, just made the rounds and got in the ears of that Warrior defense. One long road trip for Hawaii. Started at Washington State, then came straight to Las Vegas, where they've been setting up shop and practicing at a local high school. Trying to go home with two big wins and a record of 3-0. and But there's a lot of ball to be played under five and a half minutes here in the fourth quarter. As Enos kicks it away to Purvis. And here comes Deontay. The reverse set up to Michael Johnson, who can flat fly. A big block, and he gets the edge. Up near the 35-yard line, it worked. One of the problems with this reverse is they gave it away quickly. It was a lateral, you can see, and now the white shirts are able to adjust a little bit. A couple of crushing blocks to the outside. Ooh, man, that hurts. But great pursuit on the part of, of Hawaii. Hawaii because Paredes once again. James, you mentioned over and over again the number of starters that are participating in special teams. And if I'm not mistaken, that's Riddell Anthony, yet another starter who's down on the field. It is Ronald and Anthony. Excuse me, the, Ronald and Anthony. The senior. Riddell's your old teammate. And you know what? They're from <laughs> right in the same neck of the woods. Is that right? Riddell was, was from Glade Central, which is considered the muck down there by Lake Okeechobee. And Immokalee High School over Everglade City area is where Rodlin is from. So let's hope that he's okay as the training staff tends to him. Isn't that Edgerin James hometown? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I, I know way too much about Florida now, having been your partner. You ought, to, you ought to go to a high school game there with Trick Daddy sometime. So 
Roddle and Anthony there, and we'll take another look and see if we can see what happened. There's 84. Here he is right here. Now he braces himself a little bit as opposed to running through, and I think that, that that's part of it right there. If you get that blind shot, you might as well go full out, but instead he's a little bit hesitant, and it's interesting. Remember, James, you asked the question about whether or not because of his size, Anthony at six foot six, 230 pounds, could play at the next level at tight end, and they just didn't think so. And part of it you saw right there, the blocking, not his strong suit. Rodelin moved over to his back, so a good sign that there is some movement now for the senior. Back at Immokalee, Todd. The Indians were state champions back in 2004. Very intelligent young man. If you ever get a chance to visit with him, a political science major, great kid. I understand that when he got here, though, that wasn't the case. What? He wasn't smart? Well, no, no. He he asked he asked uh, he asked the coach. He said, "How long do I have to play halfback before they make me a fullback?" <laughs> okay. Now, if that's not true, I'm just saying. Okay. I heard that. Oh, Todd, stick to the sticks and stones. <laughs> Along with Todd Christensen and Toby Christensen, I'm James Bates and just under 30,000. A big round of applause for the senior wide receiver. As he'll make his way off the field. Let me ask you this ahead of time. 516 remaining. Is it four down territory the rest of the way? for UNLV. Well, I think it depends on what you got and, and where. You, yeah, I, hey, come on. What do you mean, hey, anybody, come on? If, anybody can hedge. But if they throw an incomplete pass and they, they got a lot of clock and, and they haven't really got anything going, punt it away. Okay. But their defense hasn't exactly been stalwart the last two drives. That's why I ask. There's Trotter. Channing Trotter, as this pass is incomplete, may have gotten away with one. He was in motion towards the line of scrimmage when that ball was snapped. And here's another injured player on the field. This time it's a warrior. And Mayatonga, a sophomore, hops on over. I like to see that. You know what? He's trying to help his mates. He's trying to show that he's not hurt. You don't see that very often. You see guys laying down forever. Nice courage, partner. So second and 10 for the Rebels. To the ground. Rodder tries to bounce off of another tackle, but not much there for him. He'll get a couple. But it's Victor Clore. His first stop of the night. An enormous third down here for obvious reasons, but one of the others is that this is the scenario that you pointed out. If they don't get this third down, they're probably going to have to punt, but their defense has struggled so much these last two series. Answer your own question. Is this four down territory here? Not with this time. It's pain in motion. They come off the edge. And the big body of Philip Payne sets up shop right in the middle of the field, and it'll be a fresh set of downs for UNLV to keep the drive alive. Remember earlier in the game, the one where the hit pushes the ball into him? Here's another example. Payne pulls it out. Now watch the collision. He gets sandwiched, and that actually helps him hold on to the ball by sandwiching him. Great concentration on the part of number four, who has come through in a number of clutch situations here in the second half, helping them move the sticks. the middle this time. It's intended for Ryan Wolf. And bodies banging Mana Silva, the junior safety, there to knock it away. Twice now he's separated Ryan Wolf from the football. And it's not always about a kill shot or a knockout shot. It's about going after the football. Silva shows that that's what he's doing. And we just talked about the great hands of 88. And he is a terrific player, but so is number 43. That's 13 for 18 here in the second half. 
as UNLV will spend a timeout to discuss this with 3.54 remaining. Now ask me the question again. Four down territory? Yes. <laughs> Unless there's a sack or a penalty where it's a huge number, I, I think it is now. And part of that, because you and I have discussed this from time to time, in crucial junctures in the game, you want your best group out there. Remember that football is a three-dimensional game, football, defense, and special teams. If you have a great punter, you have a great kicker, like say, for instance, Utah did with Luis Sakota, you can trust him in certain situations. If you're a team like this that is offensive strong, it seems to me you want to trust your offense. Or if you're TCU, you trust your defense and play to that strength. I would think that at this point, as I say, unless there's an enormous loss, it's four down territory. There you see our big slate of games for next weekend, a triple header. But first things first, we've got some action going on in the desert. Second down and 10. Fires one in there again. That's a going great for catch. Wolf. And it's Silva hanging on the back of his hat. He will be two yards shy of the first down, though. But that is a great catch. He's coming across the field. He comes back to the ball. And this is difficult because it's in the hand. Look at this. He has to reach back. And he's got some mustard on that ball. It's much more difficult to come back to the quarterback and make a catch because that actually speeds the ball up. Number 88, that's, that's a big catch right there to set up a third and short. Three yards to go. Ball on the 47-yard line of Hawaii. The handoff to Trotter. Pounding hard and will be close to the first down. Very close. Evan Marshall says they have it. And the officials agree. Whoa, that was... That seemed a little generous to you? All of this on the heels of the devastating loss to number 24 in the nation at the time, Oregon State last weekend, right here at Sam Boyd, 23 to 21. UNLV trying to win a close one. Out to Wolf. Here goes Ryan Wolf. Spun around, another first down, UNLV. 2.37 remaining. Well, we talk about in clutch situations how the ball needs to get in the hands of number 88, and 88 has come through over and over again. Over 100 yards receiving on this game and a variety of catches and a variety of opportunities to get the ball, whether it's handed to him, middle of the field, in the flat, corner, post, dig, hook. Number 88 continues to come through time and time again. And James, on so many occasions, the ball has been behind him and he's come up with catches. Four-man rushes, picked up, and it's through the hands. Why do the UNLV Rebels dodge a bullet there? The usually sure-handed Ryan Wolf can't hang on to it, and neither can Spencer Smith. And the hard-hitting Halley would sure like to get this one back. Look at that. He had it, and it just brushes off his elbow. And, of course, Wolf is sick because that one goes through the hands. This is we're talking about his sure-handedness. And the Rebels catch a break. Impressive, impressive numbers for Wolf. Moved into third all-time in Mountain West Conference receptions tonight. There's Payne. He'll hang on to it. Takes a lick from Kiso Calhane, but hangs on. First down, UNLV. One of the things that has been particularly impressive about Payne, remember last year as the 180-pounder, he was the jump ball guy. He has made a number of catches. Watch as he comes in here on the dig. He's made a number of catches where he's had to have collisions, and he's held on to the ball. Philip Payne all alone down at the bottom of the screen, manned up on Jeremy Bryant. There's the quick pass underneath the Johnson. A pickup of six. Now, one of the things that has to happen here, if I'm Hawaii, I've got all three of my timeouts, and I'm wondering here at the 15-yard line if I might want to use them because if UNLV scores, they want to have some time to hustle down and kick a field goal with the clock. UNLV, as you can see, is in no hurry whatsoever. They have one timeout remaining at the 15-yard line. Obviously, at this juncture, it's four-down territory. I mean, it's not even a conversation. 
I'm wondering, James, if Hawaii should spend a time out. The trips are Robinson, Wolf, and Payne. But he looks to the tight end. There he is, Kyle Watkins barreling down for a first down near the five-yard line. Now, Hawaii, James, I, I, I don't understand. The clock is going to stop with the first down, but UNLV is absolutely not in a hurry here with 53 seconds remaining. And now a timeout is called by Hawaii. That's wisdom. Point out Hawaii. It's our first timeout. Well, wisdom not only for the Hawaii coaching staff, but a good play call by Todd Berry there. Really was the misdirection getting the ball to the tight end. Now with 53 seconds left and two timeouts. James, I think that Hawaii is going to have to call timeout on the plays that are in the center of the field. This is going to be an interesting dilemma for this reason. Obviously, UNLV wants to score. That goes without saying. But the time on the clock is an issue. That you want to run a play maybe, take some time off the clock, because you've got first and goal, because ideally you'd want to score on third down, right? Because you'd want to score on third down, take some time off the clock. And of course, if you're on Hawaii's side, I wonder if there's a temptation here to let him score. Yes, especially when you're going against a defense that has not had much success. And with a minute to go, that is all the time in the world for Greg Alexander and this offense. And there's the number that you pointed out earlier in the show, James, for the last defeats with three minutes remaining. Now, of course, you know what? We say all of this, but if you're the offensive brain trust of UNLV, you're saying, hey, dude, we just want to get it in the end zone. Trotter next to Clayton. Johnson in motion. There's the rush. Pop! Omar Clayton is dropped. Jake Hewn making the start. Big time play for the Warrior D. Now, I don't understand this at all. I really think that this is a little bit of a lack of composure. He didn't feel it at all. He didn't feel him coming off the corner, and you're right, Hewn was able to nail it. But I still don't understand the timeout situation. They scramble up and make a play. That's their because last timeout. I of understand, the ball game. but that also that also saved a timeout for Hawaii. We had to figure, James, that Coach McMack and a defensive guy isn't going to be one of those guys that's just going to let him score. Yeah, but I think, too, though, when your junior quarterback gets hit like that, you're rolling the dice by calling a play and hurrying up to the line and running that's an right. offensive play. So you got to do what you got to do and not worry about Hawaii not having enough time to go down you're the right. field. Good You've got to score a Good touchdown. Point. Now, one thing that they should concern themselves with, 47 seconds left, you don't necessarily have to throw it into the end zone. But I'm thinking the temptation here is to throw the jump ball to Payne. Payne is up top. It's Michael Johnson down at the bottom. Blitz. Again, the blitz. He looks for Johnson. All over him, but no flags thrown. Jeremy Bryant, the cornerback, came over the back of Michael Johnson to try to make the play. Now, James, with 41 seconds remaining. Wow, that's tough. Because he wasn't, he, he was not going for the football. He's not going for the football. Well, there, there he is. Now, you know what, I can understand that on second look. Rebels, nine of 15 on third downs tonight. They're okay, James, to, to have a play, uh, to have something in the field to play with 41 seconds remaining. They'll have time. Goes up top for Payne. Philip Payne! Touchdown, Rebels! Now they're too busy celebrating, James, because they do have to go for two. And the coaches are telling them that. Is there anybody in the stands that didn't see this coming? It's the jump ball again to Payne. Once again, number four on number four. What a game Payne has had. Just a sophomore. 
And Philip Payne keeps getting it done near the goal line. I, I, I don't know what the review is. Catch, two feet, I, that, that's, that should be easy. This shouldn't take long at all. <laughs> You know what, it, it shows it shows the execution here, James, because this was no surprise. It just wasn't. It wasn't a big surprise. I, I was a little bit surprised because I really thought that they still had time to get a play in the field of play with 41 seconds left. But they went to their bread and butter. That one's been good to them over and over again, and it was tonight. Once again, number four gets the best of the other number four. After review, Ruling on the field is confirmed. He came down with both feet into the end zone. Touchdown. So a chance for Rebel fans to make some noise again. But careful now. This a very important two-point try for Mike Sanford's Rebels. We've already seen Warrior kicker Scott Enos hit a 47-yarder in the they, first half. And they caught a huge break with that review to get a chance to come over to the sidelines and talk about it. A huge break. Arrington in motion, and here comes Wolf behind him. Rolling right Clayton, back of the end zone, but way too high, intended for Robinson. So the lead will stay at one with 36 seconds remaining. UNLV back on top in what has been a seesaw second half. Now, don't go get something to eat or something to drink. The kickoff return here is huge. Remember the last drive, they started out at the 41-yard line. UNLV has to have outstanding kick coverage. That'll be interesting to note, James. I'm going to pay attention here to see how many starters are out there on this coverage team because this is a big deal. You want them to have to take some yards off before they can get into field goal position. But remember, folks, earlier in the game, Enos hit a 47-yarder, so he does have the leg. If they get inside the 35-yard line, it's probably somewhere on the 33 or the 34 is his range. Jekyll, the kickoff specialist. You saw Orth. You saw Terrence Lee. And it'll be Royce Pollard back at his own four waiting on this one. Last time he brought it out of the end zone. This one a shorter kick. Flying down there, guys in scarlet and gray, and it'll be the 26-yard line where Greg Alexander and the Hawaii Warrior offense will go to work. The 31 seconds. The big statistic here is the two timeouts for the Rainbows. Something else will be interesting here, James, if they're going to rush three and stay back with eight. At this point, Hawaii does not have the luxury of the five and six yard completions. They're going to have to get the ball downfield. They bring three. A little twist up front, but it's picked up nicely. Alexander pumps and throws it into the third row. Here's what I didn't understand about this, James. Watch at the end. Everybody's going to be all right in here. I would have thought that because they, they, they would have had a couple of plays that were a little bit deeper. Look at all the white shirts. They're all within 10 yards. Very strange, that particular route running in that instance. Rebel Nation getting a little bit rowdy right now for their UNLV football team. Second down and 10. Again, a three-man rush. Again, plenty of time. Side of the tackle box. Alexander wins it again into the stands. Taumua, the Honolulu guy there providing the pressure. And he's having a conversation with the referee saying, no, 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 no. I didn't, I, I didn't hit him. I didn't hit him. There's absolutely no way. They want to give him a three fi free 15 yarder here. 
Now, James is a defensive person. Do you change up the three-man rush? Do you come with someone else? Because the guy's getting an awful lot of time. Way too much time. I think you got to roll the dice a little bit at some point on this drive. We'll see what they dial up here. Showing blitz, but they back out. It's just three coming. And there goes Malo, but he misses it. Alexander throws it to his guy, Bradley. They're going to have to call timeout. And pass is complete, but the clock down to six seconds now. Here's the downside, as you mentioned, James. He's able to buy time. They're able to put a little bit of a rush. But there he comes across the field. The problem with that play, of course, is that little bit of rush. That little bit of rush probably took off about two or three seconds that they could have used for the next play. Now with six seconds remaining, their only opportunity here, I would think, would be to get to the outside for one quick throw and be able to line up for a field goal. See, so sometimes we talked about it earlier in the game, the rush of the defensive lineman. Sometimes it's not always about getting a sack or blocking a pass. In this case, they took some seconds away, some valuable seconds away from the Rainbow offense. And Greg Alexander needs to keep that in mind. He can't afford to roll for an extra beat. He's got to get it and gun it. Six seconds remain. Now, we mentioned the sidelines. Let's not forget, though, James, they do have one timeout left, so they can throw it in the middle of the field, but they have to do it quickly and then get the timeout immediately. UNLV in their prevent defense. They've got three safeties way back out of picture at the 20-yard line. Grant backs up as well. They throw underneath. It's incomplete. One second remaining. So it'll be one more stab at it for the Warriors. But it, they've got to go for the end zone. Now. Even though there's one second left, if Salas catches that ball, James, I think the game's over. Now they do it. You're right. Now comes the Hail Mary. What a game, huh? What a game. A rebel chant in full effect here at Sam Boyd Stadium. Last play of the game. And his crew moved to two and one. There's a senior quarterback, Todd, that left it all on the field tonight. What an outstanding performance by the big man from Santa Rosa, California. He was outstanding. He did everything that was asked of him. Tremendous statistics, but he falls a little bit short. And let's give credit to the other side, Omar Clayton, the young man who struggled in the first half. We debated about after throwing two interceptions and only the one touchdown, going nine for 17. Hey, maybe they're better off with Clawson in there. Instead, he comes through in the clutch. Boy, number two, you got to enjoy this one. You were terrific in the second half for the Rebels. A little more exciting tonight in Las Vegas, Nevada for Omar than it is on a Saturday night in normal Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I saw Omar yesterday Todd on campus. I said, hey, man, my wife's from Central Illinois. Tell me something about, about normal. He said, it's just boring. Man. <laughs> Tonight was not pull out the one-point victory in Sin City. Absolutely. 34 to 33, our final. Hey, Reb, we've got a triple header on the mountain for you next Saturday. Air Force and San Diego State, Colorado State and BYU in New Mexico and New Mexico State. For Toby Christensen down on the field tonight, my man Todd, I'm James Bates. Stay tuned for the Mountain Cap coming at you next. This has been a production of The Mountain. So long from Vegas, everybody. Good night.